So before we dive deeper into creating our projects using Tailwind in JavaScript, let us actually look at what is Tailwind CSS. So it's actually a utility-first CSS framework for building responsive and user-friendly websites and applications. It provides a set of pre-designed CSS classes that can be easily combined to create custom designs without having to write much custom CSS code. So this makes it a fast and efficient way to create custom designs that are optimized for performance and accessibility. Tailwind CSS uses a unique approach to design by providing a large number of low-level utility classes that can be combined in many different ways to achieve the desired look and feel of your project. With this approach, you'll get great flexibility and customizability and makes it popular choice among web developers and designers. Now that we know what Tailwind CSS is, we can now look at how we could get started using Tailwind CSS. I'm going to show you two ways on how you can use it. So one is local and one is online. So let's start with local. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to install a software. So we're going to be installing a Visual Studio Code, which is an open text editor. And you can start going to your browser. And in here, you can type in code.visualstudio.com. At this page, it will detect what operating system you're using. And you can just simply click on the button here. So uh, once you have uh, downloaded that, you can uh, just install it and just click on uh, Next. You don't need to do any additional settings. After that, we need to install a node. So can you go to a node a JS here and just uh, type it on your browser? And on the uh, links here, just type on the first one, which is a node.js.org. So once you click that, you can just choose uh, which version you like. We have the uh, recommended for most users and the latest feature. So I think this one would be a safe for starters. So once you have that, we can now just minimize this and we can create our a new folder. So I'll just click on folder here and I'm just um, gonna drag it here on our second monitor. And to open that inside the uh, Visual Studio application, you can just click and drag the folder and uh, just click it on your Visual Studio icon. At that point, it will open it inside the application. So you can see that we have the new folder in here. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is open the terminal. So I'm going to go here to the upper corner here. You can see that we have all of the menus here. Click on Terminal and click on New Terminal. So in here, we're using PowerShell, but we need to be using either Git Bash or the command prompt. So you can go this or here on this drop down here. Click it and you'll be able to see that we have command prompt or git bash. So I'll just click on git bash. And in here, I'll just type in npm init or npm initialize. Now, if you don't know what um, package.json is, it is the one that we'll be creating. And this is actually a document that contains a various metadata of the entire node application. So it consists of key value pairs in actual JSON format. So you can see that we're starting a, a new package.json file here. So you can just press on enter. So it uh, shows the package name, the version, the description, the entry point, which is the index.js, the test command, a git repo, keywords, so on and so forth. So you just have to press enter on all of those. And finally, you can press enter on this one to initialize it. At that point, you can see that we have package.json. So that you'll also be sure that you have node installed on your machine. You can also just type in node-v. And it will show you the current version of your node because you want to be able to create a package.json file if node is not installed successfully on your machine. So now that we have installed that successfully, we can now go back to our browser here and we can go to tailwind css.com so let's just click on a get started now in here you can see that we have guidelines on how we could get started with tailwind css so the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to be installing tailwind onto our project so i'll just copy this control c or command v then I'll just go back to 
our application in here and then I'll just paste it so you can paste it with control V or you can use your a right click on your mouse just like so hit enter and then it will adjust a load up a bit to uh, download all of the needed resources onto our project and once it finishes you can see that in the package.json file we have a tailwind here already now let me just go back i'll just minimize this and go back to our browser here and the next thing that we need to do is to create the tailwind.config.js file and we can do that by copying this command here Again, control your command v here to copy and paste it so i'll just go back to our application and I'm once again in here on our top terminal paste it and press enter now let's just wait for it and you'll notice that we have created that tailwind.config.js file here if you click that you'll see this codes here and once we have that let's just go back to our browser in here and you can see that on our tailwind.config.js file you just need to copy this command here so I'll just copy that go back to our visual studio here and just paste it inside this content just like so at this point we need to create some other folders the one for our CSS and for our index.js or HTML file so I'll just click on this folder here to create a new folder we're gonna be creating a this folder and I'll also create a source folder just like so now this could be any name that you want so now that we have that on our uh, this folder we're going to be creating an index.html file here just press on enter and then if we go back to our tailwind.config.css we need to change on the source here to this and we don't need this asterisk here just like so now that we have done that, we can go back to our browser here. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be creating an input.css file here and copy this commands here onto that file. So I'll just press down Control C again to copy that. Let's go back to our application here. Now we have created our source file already here, or folder. And I'll just click that and create a new file under it. I'll be typing in input.css and just paste on those files in there or commands in there so again save it Control s or command s to save the a file so you need to make sure that you save every changes that you do on every file or folder now let's just go back to our a browser here so I'll just minimize that again and the last thing that we need to do is do a run a tailwind so I'll just copy this and then go back to our file here and then on our terminal we'll run that command just like so now on our index.html let's just um, create a um, structure here so i can just type in html in here and then we can choose html5 and then it will automatically create those a uh, basic or starting structure for your html so we just need to of course tell it where to get the uh, styling so I'll just type in link click the link here and we be or we're gonna be creating those styles on the output.css file here just like so save it and now we can just put in a sample style or text here so I'll just put in h1 put in hello world and now we can uh, use tailwind in here so I'm gonna put in page header and I'm gonna put in bg maybe yellow so you can see that we can uh, use 50 100 200 up to 900 and if on your end you're not uh, seeing this intellisense what you can do is just go to plugins so you can just click on uh, this extensions here and then you can uh, type in a tailwind And here you can install this Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. The next thing that you need to install is the live server. So this will let you view HTML files directly to your browser. So just install that. Let me just go back to our files here and click on index.html. So 
So I can now just uh, save this and then right click on it and open it live server. And then you'll notice that we have uh, that file in here. So we have the hello world with a, a background of a yellow. So we're basically sure now that the Tailwind CSS is now working. Now at this point, if I look back here, so if I change this to maybe blue, press on Control S to save it, go back here, you'll notice that it's not working anymore. So if I refresh it, you see that it's updated. But then what if you don't want to keep on pressing the refresh button every time you make changes? So what you can do is we can just go back here, copy this command here without the npx, go back to our application and here on our package.json, you can just put on a comment here and just put in dev and then paste the command that we have. Control S or Command S. And in here, we need to rerun the node for our application or project. But this time, we'll be typing npm run dev. Just like so. So if we go back to our browser here, let me just show you. Right now, we haven't done any changes. But then if I type in something in here, so let me just open this side by side with our browser in here so that we can see the changes. So I'm going to go back to our index.html and then I'm going to change this back to yellow. And once I save this, you'll see that the changes happened already on the browser without pressing, or without pressing the refresh button. So that's how you would do it locally. Now, doing it online is a lot different than doing it locally. It's pretty much easier actually. So we can just go back to our browser here. I'll just maximize that. And we can just go to a play dot tailwind dot playwind play dot tailwind css dot com. So in here you have a this playground here. You can see that we have all of the HTML files in here, the CSS, we have the configs in here. And since that we're doing this online, everything here works like you're doing it or running Tailwind locally. So for example, we have uh, this codes here, and this is the output of this code in here. At this point, I can just maybe just go on the background here. So let me just uh, zoom this in a bit so that you can see this a lot better. So I can just look for this background in here. So I can just type here you can see that the uh, background it's using is white you can just change this to maybe a blue and you'll see that it's already having this auto suggest or intelligence since we're working inside tailwind already at this point i can just click that and uh, you'll notice that the changes happen instantly once you input that class or command in there you don't need to uh, refresh the page or even type in any extra command. We don't even need to download anything since we're already working inside Tailwind. So we're going to be using at this format for the rest of the course so that it will be ready and we don't need to install any additional plugins or add some other commands for it to work. Aside from that, it will be easier for us to check it if it's responsive. So we can just go up here and change on the views here can view it on any size here and uh, easily click and drag this to know if our project or our section is actually responsive and even switch to a dark mode if you want to let me just put it back here so there you have it that's how you could easily get started using the tailwind css so on the uh, next lesson we're going to start our project and we're going to be using the online Tailwind Play to start working on our projects. For our first project, we're going to be designing a product landing page inside the play.tailwindcss.com editor. So we're doing this online so that we don't need to install or download anything. We can just use links to be able to form this website so this is the end result of our project here so we're going to be uh, working on or designing header section uh, main section we're going to be designing the uh, footer 
We'll be adding some testimonial section. We'll also be working on our email subscribe section. Be adding some price grids, and we'll also look at how we could add some uh, product models inside our module here, and also look at how we could add some image gallery. And after all of this, you'll know how you can use the Tailwind Online or also work on with the Tailwind CSS components inside your project. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start on our first lesson. So this is Tailwind Online here, and we're going to be doing our project in here. And with this, there are minimal preparations. So we have all of the assets that we need here under the Tutorial Assets folder. And if you click that, we'll be opening the SVGs in imagelink.txt. And all that we need for our project is listed in here. So you can just copy and paste them to our project. So you can see that we have the codes here. And if I scroll down here, we'll be showing everything that we code in the preview window here so what we'll do is just delete all of them and on the next video we'll be starting to put our own code and start doing our land page in this lesson we're going to be looking at how we could create our nav bar or our header section for our project so first, we'll select all of the text here, Control a or Command a to select them all, and then just hit the Delete key on your keyboard. So once the code are deleted, we'll be putting on some HTML tags. And since we're creating navigation, we'll be using nav here. So we can start with the greater sign here, and you'll notice that there are auto suggests coming up based on the Tailwind components that is available. So you can just scroll down with your mouse, and if you don't see the tag that you're looking for, you can just type it in, and it will cd or it will show the auto suggest and also hover your mouse or click this arrow here to show what it does so you can see the nav element represent a section of a page that links to other pages or parts of the page so you can see that in here so i'll just click on nav here and then of course if there's an opening tag there is a closing tag so it's a basic golden rule in html here and what's inside will be contained inside the navigation or a nav section here so let me just delete that and i just always put space first so that we can easily see this anyways we can easily tidy it up later on if we need to so again you can see what it does here you just um hover your mouse in here and we're going to be clicking that div and once again don't forget the closing tag so i'll just put the closing tag here just like so press enter so div is a uh, short for division so it actually uh, divides some sections inside your contents or containers. So we're going to be adding an anchor tag. And an anchor tag is used when you want to add hyperlinks to your text here. So we're going to be putting in an opening anchor tag. And of course, we'll also be adding a closing tag. So what's inside is the text here. So we can see that it's also showing here on our preview window. We have that home there. And if you click it, you'll see that it's going to a blank page here. But then you can add some links. And the way you do that is by adding an href attribute. So you can see that contains a URL or a URL fragment. So we'll be putting on the link that we want here. So for example, if I put in, let's say, www.google.com, and if we go back to our preview here and click that, so as long as you have the correct link, it will route to that page. So you can see I didn't have it right here. So let's just uh, go to google.com here and I'll just copy on the address link here and go back to our Tailwind Online and I'll just highlight this and paste that. Now once again, if we uh, go back and click on our home text here, I'll just click it. You can see that since we have the right link, it routed to the uh, Google website. Just close that. Now we're going to be adding some styling, but then I'll just put in some hashtag in here for now because we don't have any links for it. And what the hashtag does is to just route it back to the home page. So let's just add some class here. And you can see that a class is actually a used to add some CSS or styling or any JavaScript and use this class as a selector. So whatever we put in here, will be um, having its own style based on the Tailwind component. So for example, if I 
put in let's say maybe background so BG stands for background and it's actually a tailwind um, styling component so if you press on control or command spacebar you'll see that there are auto suggests and what you're seeing here is still based on the tailwind component so you can notice that if I put in 800 you can see that it had added that styling here if we go to the tailwindcss.com you'll be able to see all of the components that's available for you to use so in here you can uh, let me just enlarge that a bit so you can see this properly and here in the quick search you can type in any that you want let's say in type in bg and you can see that there are background here size origin so on and so forth but uh, so that we can see color here let me try background color but then it's still not showing the color although you can see that there are similar elements here that you saw me typing so let's just um try to put in the text color so that we can see the colors here so i'll just type in colors and let's um click that text color so you can see on the right sign here you'll see all the preview of that color here just like so you can see we have text yellow text lime so on and so forth so it's not just gray that we can use and depending on the number would be the intensity of that color all right so the next thing that we'll do is um we'll add some uh, more styles to our text here for our navigation here so we'll put in text white since we have a black background here you can see that this is the attributes that this class text white has based on the tailwind online component and let's add uh, some spacing here so we'll be adding paddings and in tailwind padding is classified as p so x is the x axis so that will be adding the left and right padding here so we can see that we have some auto suggests and there are numbers depending on how large you want you can choose it so notice that we add padding x dash three here you can see the spacing there we'll also add some padding on the y axis let's just put two in there and i think that's looking good all right so the uh, next thing that we uh, want to add here is i'm just going to be making the corners round here so we'll just Put rounded here now if you look at the preview here you'll notice that the corners are now round and down here also on the auto I just clicked on the dash MD you can see this is the attribute that it has it has a border radius here with that value so it now applies to uh, that element here just like so all right so let's just um, add uh, some class here on our navigation so that we can uh, see it on the background so i'll just put in a bg a gray maybe 800 here and maybe i'll um, just change on the color for our anchor tag here to a, a lesser intensity so that we can see the difference just like so so i'm going to be putting text here and i'll just specify the size here which is small so let's just make that smaller for the font here i want it to be medium for the font weight so that we have some a little bit of thickness in our font here now let me just highlight this control c or command c and then paste that here from control v or command v so that we can add more menus now change this text here to testimonial and for this one i'll put in price and finally i'll put in projects just like so all right so after setting up all of the menus here it's uh, time to uh, refine this more Let's add some uh, more style to the container that's holding it. So we'll just put in class in here again and let's put in some uh, flex styling in here. And basically what flex does is to uh, make the other items within the container to be the same length as others regardless of its content. So if you look at the uh, review or the preview window, you'll notice that the menus are the same with the uh, navigation background here if we add flex. On our class here so there are other flex here and um, let's just um, add some spacing between our uh, menus text here so I'll just put in space and you can see we have the x-axis here and we'll be adding a four and you'll notice on our preview window that there are space in between our uh, menu text just like so so let me just also change the colors here so that we'll know which is active 
So we have that to a lesser intensity. All right, so that's looking pretty good, right? So the next thing that we'll be adding here is we'll be adding maybe some of the uh, logo. So the way that we can do that is we'll just create another container here or division here. So I'll just um, type in a div again. So once again, we need an opening and closing tag. So I'll just type in a div for this one. So I'll just um, paste that here. And this is our closing tag. Press enter here. And then I'll put in an image here or an image tag. And you can do this by adding IMG. That's what you can see here. And we'll be putting on a source on where we can uh, get the image. So for the image, we can actually just go to, let's say I'll just check on our links here from our tutorial assets folder. You can see that we have the Tailwind logo in there and it's inside the our tutorial assets folder. So I'll just click or copy this. I'll highlight it. Control C or Command C. And I'll go back here and paste it inside the this double quotes here. You can see it's um, quite big for our project here. So let's just set the attributes of this image. So I'll just type in class here. And I'll just add a class of a block here. And then we'll also be adding the height, setting it to 8. So if you notice that the logo is now smaller. Let's set the width to auto so that it is proportional to the height, making sure that we have the original size for our image, just like so. And you might notice that our image here doesn't have a closing tag. It's just enclosed in a greater or less than sign here. And that's because some of the element or tags here in HTML doesn't have or doesn't need any closing tag, just like this image here so let me just add some alt here and what the alt attribute does is to make sure that if your image doesn't load it will have an alternative text that will show and we'll add some headings or h1 in here and basically what headings are for is to set on a size for your text here normally h1 tags are for landing sections where the user will be seeing the first text or first content of the page when they first visit the website so h1 is the largest actually there is h2 h3 h4 until h6 i think so let's just change the text on that to white let's add a, a flex attribute on this one for styling and i'll just make sure that the items are centered here all right Looking pretty good. So let's also justify this to a center. I'll just click that in there. You can see that it's now centered in there. And let's also add some paddings here. So I'll put in PX there. And let's also enlarge the text here because the headings is not enough to set the size. We can make it larger by specifying it here. And also let's add some intensity on the weight here so i'll put in font medium just like so it's looking pretty good and let's put this in a container both the logo and the text here so i have set up the div here now let's just add some class here so let's put on flex here so that they'll be both in the same column or row all right so let's just uh, put in flex one and then aside from that i'll I want this to be a centered also so I'll just put in items centering here so but we are sure that this text here are a centered in our project or container here just like so so looking good so far and we just have some uh, one uh, final touches to do on this one so that this uh, this is gonna be a finish so I think I'll just change this flex here. I'll change that to maybe shrink dash zero. All right. So I think I'll just change this to, to uh, just item center because we want it on the left side here. All right. 
Now, let me just enclose all of this to another uh, division here. So we'll be enclosing the logo and our uh, menu. And then we'll be adding some styles so that they'll be all in the same row here. So I'll just put it down here, just like so. And then inside our division here, we're going to be adding some class again. So I'll just um, type in class. And I'm going to put it on a flex style here again. So I'll just type it in, in there. And you'll notice that they are now in the same row here or line here. So I'll just add some height in here. And maybe I'll also center it out so that they're centered within that navigation section. And justify between is actually justifying the elements from a left to right. And it's now showing that it's actually on the left here and on the right here. So if we go to the full screen mode here, you can see that it's now looking really good. So let's just go back to the code here. So uh, that's how you can easily create navbar with a Tailwind online. So we didn't even need to install anything or download anything. So we're just using links for our images and for our logo here. Now let's just add some uh, final touch here. So I'll just create another division here with everything inside here again so that we can add some um, paddings or uh, margins on this one to make it better so I'll just add some class in there and I'll put in some margin auto to make sure that this is centered here I'm also going to be adding a max width of a 7xl and once again if you need to check what this attribute or styling does you can go back to tailwindcss.com and check out most of the stylings in there so as you use or do this, you'll be pretty much be familiar with all of the styling or the components that Tailwind has. And you can easily just use them inside your project. In this video, we're going to be creating our main section for our website. So we're going to be using Tailwind CSS again to continually create this appealing website so the first thing i'm going to do is tidy it up so i'll just press that tidy button and you can see that all of the codes are now looking neat and organized so the next thing i'm going to do is go down here and just create the main section so we can do that by putting on a main and you can see here that the main element represents the main content of the body of the document or application so we need of course also a closing tag for this one so I'm going to close this main element here. So we have an opening tag and we're going to be putting also a closing tag for this one. Just like so. Now inside uh, this main HTML element, we're going to be putting on our contents. So let us set the uh, main styling first. So this will serve as our container. So I'm going to be putting on some class here. So I'm going to add some background gray on this one and once again we're just using the tailwind components here after that i'm going to be adding some height and i'll just set it to something that's going to occupy the whole screen here so i'm going to set it to a screen and again what this does is to set the height of our container to the whole screen like a hundred percent width so with that set just going to add a, a div here and what this uh, div will hold is our contents. So I'm going to be putting on our heading first, H1. So if you look at how we've used the heading one on our previous video. So in here, I'm just uh, going to type in our content here. I'll just put in some placeholders. So I'm just typing data to enrich your online business. Just like so. So you can see it here on our preview now. And um, let's just modify the look on this heading here. So I'm going to put on a class here. And I'm going to set it to a larger font size. So I have that set also to a bold. So that we can have a, a stronger 
intensity on the weight here and the next one is I'll also be adding some uh, tracking here so that we have a little bit of spacing in between characters here so we'll have that as um, tie tracking we'll also set the alignment to center here just like so right, maybe we'll just set that to text center we'll be looking at setting the responsiveness on the uh, next module so we'll just put that to text center because using the SM is actually referring to a small screen size so I'm just going to be adding some uh, background clip text on this one too because I want to have uh, this text a, a gradient color so what we're going to do is we're going to be clipping a gradient color or overlay on this text so we're going to set the text to be transparent so text dash transparent and then we'll be setting on the uh, gradient to assign to another color. So we'll be setting to BD dash gradient and cyan to, let's say, a little bit darker or a lighter. All right, that's looking pretty good. And once again, all of this components or this class that I'm typing. You can see this on the tailwindcss.com. You just need to search, for example, gradient in order for you to see these codes. So we're going to be adding some uh, paragraphs now. And I can go to a lorem ipsum. You can just type it here on the address bar. And the first link you'll see is um, the one that you can use. So in here you can uh, simply just get some placeholders if you need to. So pretty useful when you're just um, layouting your or designing your website and just want to add some placeholders just to see what it looks like. Let's go back here and I'll just paste on our placeholders here. Just like so. And following that, we'll have a class for this paragraph so that we can add some styling on it. So this one will have a larger text because the paragraph seems to be a bit larger. So I'll be putting on some margin on the top first and then I'll set the text to a bit smaller. So it I think I said larger earlier, but then it should be smaller. And we'll set the leading or leading to just 8 pixel here. And let's just add some color for our text. Maybe we just might need to set it to a bit darker so that we can see that. So I'll just put in 600 on that one, just like so. And you, as you do this, you can see how pretty useful Tailwind components are. You can easily style a element or some paragraphs or headings without even going to your a local CSS file. You can just put on a class and just use the components to easily stylize your elements. All right, this is looking pretty good. Now let me just add some anchor tags here. So we're going to be uh, creating a button. So in here I'm going to be just putting a hashtag because we're just using this as a placeholder and I'm putting the text learn more all right and then we're gonna be adding some class to stylize this also so first of all I'm gonna put on inline block here and since we're gonna make this look like a button we're gonna make that rounded large I'm gonna add a background of cyan here just like so and you can see that it's rounded because we added that rounded dash a large class here all right so the next thing i'm going to do is i'll give it a padding so that we, there is a spacing inside of our button here all right it's looking pretty good then let's make the text let's say text space and then we'll also change the font weight here to just semi bold let me just also add some leading here for our paragraph. So normally when you're creating a website or a full stack website, you don't normally do it directly inside, let's say, Tailwind or any other text editor. So you would design it first in a uh, designing a software, let's say like a Figma or Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator. And in there you'll be able to know the exact, let's say, padding or margin or the colors that you need for your website to look good 
But then for the purpose of this lesson, we're just uh, doing it here on play.tailwind.css.com. And in here, we are actually seeing the uh, changes or the styling as we code it here inside the application. But then again, you would set the design first and then you would uh, go to your text editor or online text editor and then from there you'll be able to just code it directly without uh, doing some trial and errors. But then as of now you can see that we are actually just looking at how it looks. We're changing the styling, we're removing classes, we're adding classes and we're just looking at what looks best for our project here. So now I'm going to be adding a class here again and I'm going to be putting the button inside of it so that we can set the container that like the margin and then the padding and then its gap. So I'm going to also center this out just like so. So that's looking pretty good on our main section here. Now the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to be adding some uh, styling for the container. So remember earlier we created this div and uh, this holds all of the contents that we have here on our main section. So we're going to be putting on some paddings and some uh, margins. So first I'm going to be setting the position to relative, put some padding on the x-axis here so that we can see that on the left and right. We have some spacing in there. Maybe it should be fine here. All right. So once again, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be adding a, a div here. And I think that you uh, might be uh, questioning why I keep creating divs here. Now, imagine a box here. And when the box or with the box, you want to create divisions or sections on that box. So that's what we're actually doing here. We're creating divisions so that we can easily manage our contents here and put on some spacing or paddings or margins on our elements here inside our project. You also might be asking, why not just create one division per element or content? Well, by doing this, we're able to scale more on our project and we can easily do some edits or changes on the styling of our divisions without affecting the other areas of our project. So right now, I'm going to be adding a background image. I'm going to be putting on bg and dash url here for the class. So I'm going to go to pexels.com here. And once again, pexels.com is a website for free stock photos. So you can easily go to this website and just look on and use any of their assets here. I'm just going to go down here maybe look on maybe this one should work fine. So I'll just click that right click on it and we're going to be copying the image address here. So I'm just going to go down here and click on copy image address and then I'll go back to our application here and just put on the URL here. And right now you can see that we have a full screen background image which we pulled off from pexels.com. So the background image should be set to covered, but then let's just check that. I'm just um, going to go up here and see. You can see that it's not set to covered. It seems to be repeating when we change on the width here. So we're going to set this to have a uh, background content fitting of covered. So we can do that by say, typing bg dash no repeat first. And after that, we'll be typing VG dash cover. And that sets the background image to fit on the size that we've set for our website here. So you can see that's looking fine now. And that's how we create our main section for our website here. So let me just go back to our codes here. And then once again, we are just using Tailwind components here. We haven't even been using any plugins or anything. And you can see the power of Tailwind. On our last section, we managed to build our main section. So in this video, we're going to focus on building our footer section. So it will be the same. So we're going to be creating a footer element for our HTML here. So we're going to just write or type in footer. So we, of course, we have an opening and closing tag for this one. And inside our footer section will be our contents for the footer. So I'm going to be putting in a div again so that we can easily group our contents or elements that you want to put a style on. 
and inside our a div element I'm just going to be putting in a class here so I'll just put space and then type in class once again you can easily know what component you're using because we are actually working inside the tailwind play online and you can see that there are auto suggests that will easily let us use the tailwind components so what you normally put on a footer is the copyrights terms and conditions so on and so forth so you can see that appearing in here in the windows area so i'm just gonna go and look at a copyright icon here so i just normally go to and type a copyright icon on the address bar and you can see that whatever comes out i can just copy it so i can just select this or just click on this one and copy that go back to our tailwind play and i can just paste that in here so now we have that copyright icon pasted in there or if you know the like the alt icon shortcut like alt 156 or something you can also use that so in here i'm going to be putting on a link for our website all right just like so so now we have our uh, blank link here we also have our background let's just add some text color here so let's make that white and you can see that it's now turned to white let's um, add some paddings also so that we have space inside our division here i'll just uh, put in some divs again so that we can create another a group of contents on this footer here so we have an opening tag and a closing tag so let me just go to the other tab here let's go to our lorem ipsum generator so that we can copy some placeholders so again this is the uh, link that we're going so we can also go with the first link but then let's try the second link too so in here you can see that we can generate a text placeholder so if you click generate you'll have a random text here and we can just copy this and go back to our application here and paste that so now we have this text placeholder here now let me just add some class to this container of uh, text or paragraphs that we have here so i'm going to put in a auto for the uh, margin for our left and right a margin bottom of six let's um, also add some width sizing here so let's just make that half of our screen here and in here let me just check that so it's looking good so let us also put this inside a paragraph so p is the element tag for paragraph so of course we need a closing tag for this one too all right now that we've set that let's um let me just also add another a div here so that we can add some more contents for our footer so once again we'll be creating an opening and closing a div tags here just like so all right so now what i want to do is uh, maybe just add some styling or class here on our footer container or section so let's just put some text alignment center in here right and you notice that it's centered out our text inside our preview window Let's also add some a background of uh, gray here so let's just also add a white for our text so that's looking pretty good all right for our div here maybe um i want to put the division maybe outside of our current division here just like so all right so let's just add some class i'll just be uh, putting in some padding on our x-axis so that's um six pixels for left and right for the top we'll be putting six pixels also for the padding and actually if you check on and tailwind css.com six doesn't actually mean six pixels it's actually a percentage so you can just check that if you want to know the exact value so i'm going to be putting on some anchor tags here and inside that anchor tag i'll be putting on some text here that we can click on so we'll be just going to our useful links and images here we can just copy this svg we're going to be adding the uh, social media icons here so you can see that it added it in there once again if you want to know how you can import svgs inside your project you can just go here on the ionic icon website so you can just type it in on your address bar and in this website you can simply just type in a page for example we have facebook you can just download the svg click on that svg right click on it and in here we can just go to the view page source and you can just copy this so once you copy that you can just go back to the application or the tailwind online application and just copy it inside your text editor 
Now, once you have that in there, you can simply just change on the styling if you want to. Now, let me just add some class here, our styling for our anchor tag. So I'm going to be putting in, let's say, some rounded stroke here for our social media icon. So we're going to be putting also some boardings in here or borders. We'll set that to two, set the border to a white. And then let's also set the text here to a white, just in case we'll be adding some text. Also be putting on some a leading to a normal here. So we're actually making a like a rounded stroke on our social media icon. We'll pretty much see the end result once we're done here. So after that, we'll be also adding some uh, focus on this one. So what focus does is to let you add a style when your mouse is focused on the element here. So I'm just going to be putting on uh, some focus here of um, maybe an outline of the nun for now. So uh, we'll be uh, working on with some animations later on in the next module. So we'll also be adding some width and height for our circle stroke here for our social media icon. And uh, now that we've set that, let me just check if we need to add some uh, more styling in here. Okay, let's just uh, set also the text if uh, ever we're going to be adding some text for this one, the uppercase. And I think that's about it. Now, finally, to let us see what that styling does. And we're going to be adding some type here of a, a button. And as soon as we did that, you'll notice that on our preview window, we now have that a circle stroke on our social media icon. So while you check that a circle stroke, I'm just adding the href value for our anchor tag, which is blank here. So whenever we click that, it will route back to our home page. But then we can also put in a link in there, just like what I've taught you or what we've seen on the previous lesson. So now that we're done, we can just easily copy this. So for example, if we're going to be adding some other social media icons, so we can go back to our useful links and down here we have Twitter. So I also have some other social media icons there that you can use. So we're just going to be copying this SVG until the closing tag here. And we can just paste that on the other instance that we copied. So let me just go up here and, and just choose this and replace that with the copied ones. You can see that we have Twitter here now. Down here we have the Google social media icons so i can just copy this and then just copy this one let me just select now maybe it's uh, down here so okay we'll just select this then replace that and you'll see that we have the google social media icon and now in the preview of our project now let me just um change this to yellow and this is what's good about svgs you can see that we can just modify the class here unlike if we're using images you wouldn't be able to modify the color of our icons but with svg since they are made of vector graphics or paths we can easily modify the color if we want to so looking at this we can also do some other things so maybe we want to refine the styling of our class add some more paddings or maybe change on the flex position of our objects so we can just center this one out just refining this to make it look nicer give it a little space from the text below just like so so now we've finished making our footer section in this video we're going to be designing our testimonial section here now let's go to our code here so what we're going to do is we're going to create a section tag for our HTML and again section is used to define a section of a document with specific theme and if you look at on our last lesson we've been just using divisions for our contents and we use division to actually group together our elements and style them together in this case we're going to be doing a testimonial section so we're going to be using the section tag for this one now let me just um, add some styling or class for our section here. So if we can do it on division, we can also do it on section. So let's just uh, put on some paddings for our section here first. All right, now that we have set the padding and the margins, we'll also be putting on some gray color for our text so that it's uh, already uh, repaired when we put on some text. 
and of course we'll be adding some a uh, background for this one also so that we can uh, see that clearly on our preview window here now let's just add some divisions here and on our division let's uh, just add some a uh, styling or class here for text center alignment we'll also be adding an auto margin for the x-axis which is the left and right and let's put on some headings here so i'll put in heading three here so let me just add some testimonial title here and let's just um, add some styling on this one so i'll just uh, make this text a little bit uh, larger just like so let's also add some weight to this one so that it would really look like a title for this section just like so now let me just add some text color on this one let's just add some uh, darker gray here and the next one we'll be putting is some uh, paragraphs and we'll be adding some placeholder again for this one so uh, once again we'll be just putting on some uh, styling for the paragraph and we'll set that later so let me just go back to our generator here copy that and paste that in here just like so now i'm going to be adding some uh, margins at the bottom and let's also add some paddings just like so then um, yeah that's looking pretty good all right so what i'm gonna do next is i'm gonna add another division down here so let's um just add all of those person that's giving testimonials for our page for example so you can just go to tailwindcss.com again and let's look at grids here so i'm just gonna click on the grid and you can see these are the example and these are the components or codes that you can just copy and paste to your code here so that you can easily uh, use that component so we'll be putting on grid here and we'll set on the uh, grid columns to three because we want to create three sections for our testimonials or the people that will be reviewing our website or giving testimonials to our website all right so let's just set on the divisions for each of those sections or columns so I'll just put in margin bottom 12 here and then let's just add some a more division to this one just like so and in here i'm going to be putting on an image so you can just put an img tag and the source and what's in here is our link so we can just go to pexels.com and get our free stock photos just be typing profile picture and let me just set the filters here let's have a look at the square ones I think I'll use this first one, so I'll just right click on it and just copy the image link just like so. And then we can just paste that here. And you can see that it's here now. And let's just change the class here. I want to make it round, so let's just add some around it on the borders here. Let's make that full. Let's just add some shadows on it. All right, looking pretty good. Let's uh, change the width here. All right, that looks fine. All right, now that we have uh, set that in here, we can uh, just be putting on some headings here for our placeholder. So I'm just putting a random name, maybe one Carlos would do fine. All right, and um, let's just add some uh, title here for the position. So I'll just be putting web developer. All right, and now let's just add some styling for our heading here. So I'll just uh, make the text a little bit larger and maybe just change the font weight also and also the color here so I'll be putting some up margins yep that should be fine and let's just give it some text blue in there all right so looking good looking good next up i want to add some uh, paragraph in here but then i want a double quote icon in here so i'll just uh, go here and just copy paste my double quote and you can actually see it here so if i uh, just maximize this you can see that you can copy it here on our useful links and then just copy the svg path for our double code so now that we have that in there and we have enclosed it in our paragraph we can just go back to our lorem ipsum generator copy that and paste that here all right that's um looking pretty good in there now i can uh, just add some class here for our paragraph I'll just be putting margin at the bottom here and let me just see what else we can refine here 
All right, so let's just go up here and uh, maybe uh, I'll just add some class for our container here, which holds our image. So I'll just make that flex and justify it to a center, just like so. And then I want to put a margin bottom also so that we have space here between the title and the name. All right, that's looking pretty good. At this point, I can just add some maybe rating for it. So I'll just put in an, an ordered list. And what this does is to create a list of elements that you want to put on together. So I'll be putting on a list here. So if we have like a, a list, we also have an ordered list. And if we go here, check on an ordered list, you can see that an ordered list starts with a UL. And we can see an example here. So normally, that's how you would use that an ordered list. But then, of course, you can remove the bulletin on that one. So you will be copying on the star here from our useful links and just paste that in there. You can see it is showing now on our preview window. And we'll just copy that maybe four more times here. So Control C or Command C to copy that and then Control V or Command V to paste that. You can see they are lining up downwards. We want them to line up in a one row. So let's just put on a flex here. Just like so and let's just center it out all right it's looking pretty good let me just uh, put on a margin a zero for the bottom of this and let's just add one more star here so i'll just go back to our useful links and we have a half star here so i'll just use that all right i'll copy that and just replace that with this all right just like so now that we have uh, this we can easily change the color if we want to so that's what I like about SVGs. We can easily modify it if you want to. Now let's just copy this whole column here. So I'll just highlight this and maybe just go all the way down here. There we see the end of that. And um, let me just go back up here since we know where's the start and the end here. And I'll just highlight that. Control C or Command C to copy that. And then just go at the bottom of this and press Enter here and just paste that in there just like so now we have two more copies of that and from here we can easily just change on the pictures and the names or the contents and we have the same styling so if you're using let's say the, the same styling for that section you can just easily copy and paste you don't need to start from scratch here you can just use it and just modify it the way you want to so in this case we're modifying the name and the position and of course we'll be changing on the image so we're going to be going back to pixels.com we'll go back to profile picture set the orientation to square and let's just look down here for another picture here all right so maybe i think i'll just use this one go back here and paste the link here just like so and then let me just go up here and we'll change the name here to Lara Croft. All right, so let's just use this image here. And let me just paste that there, just like so. And maybe let's just change on the rating for this one. So we're going to be using a full star for this one. So I'll just replace this half star. All right, and uh, maybe for this third one, we'll be using an empty star for the fifth star so that it would look like it only has four stars. So we have that in here. Let's just copy that and let's just paste that in here, just like so. So that's how you can easily create the testimonial page. And at that point, you can just tidy them up to fix your code again. So that's looking pretty good here. You can see the full screen mode. All right, so on our next lesson, we're going to be looking at how we could create our email subscribe card for our project. Testimonial section done. Now it's time to create our email subscribe and we're going to add it down here. So we're just going to create a section for our email subscription. So we can go back to the codes here and down here on our footer, we'll just um, look for a area where we'll be putting our email subscribe card so i think this place would be best here under the social media icons so we can just create a div here 
And before we create our content, it's actually also a good practice of creating comments inside your codes so that you can easily locate or determine what that section or content is for. So just be putting in email subscribe here and you can easily comment this out by pressing down the control or command backslash or forward slash on your keyboard beside the shift or right shift key and then that comments out your type here so now that we know this is for email subscribe section we can now create a form for our email subscribe button if you hover your mouse here you can see that the form element represent a collection of form associated elements so let's just also put in a closing tag for our form here just like so now inside our form we'll be just uh, putting on some other elements and what you add inside a form is um you can also add div you can also add some inputs but let's just add some div first and i'm going to be putting on a class here so let's just put on some a uh, grid so we'll be creating three rows or section for our grid here so let's just put on grid a dash column dash three all right so after that we'll be creating our divs here again so that we have three separate sections for our column just like so all right now let's just add some paragraph here and of course we need a closing tag for our paragraph i'll be putting in a sign up for our newsletter just like so let me just create another division and down here so that we can start working on the other columns for our newsletter so we have it here and then what's inside this is going to be our input so what input is for is for you to be able to put in your data on your form so if you have a form you have your inputs and it will give you a field and in this way we can set what kind of input this will be in this case we'll be setting it to a type text and we'll also be adding a class here to stylize this input so we'll be putting on form control here maybe we want to put on a block just like so and let's uh, just set on the width to a full here and let's just uh, add some paddings and also we'll do that on the x and y axis all right so that's looking pretty good here now let's see we can also add some uh, text base for this one and let's just uh, make the font normal all right let's uh, also add some colors for our text here so what we're doing here is we're going to be adding a placeholder inside our input so that the users will know what they will put in or they they would like have a tooltip guide on what to type in inside this input so now that we have set the border here, we'll also uh, make that border darker. So maybe lighter. So just 300. And let's make that rounded. All right. So you can see that it's around here. You can see the corners of our input being around now. So if we type here, you can see the text are being inputted on that field. Now, what we were going to do, if you remember earlier, is that we're going to be adding a, some a placeholder. So to do that, we can uh, just go out of the class here and just add placeholder. And then we'll be putting on email address here. So remember, we have uh, set the color of the text here to a uh, gray. And that's why it's uh, showing a gray color for our placeholder here. All right, it's looking pretty good. Now we're, we're going to be adding another division here for our button. So let me just add the closing tag. And let me just add a, a button HTML tag here. So you can just click that and see that we have an opening tag and, of course, a closing tag for our button. Just like so. So let me just add subscribe. And you can see that the subscribe text appeared on our preview window. Let's just add a type. So this button has a type of submit. Let's just add some styling on our button here. So we have set the padding 6 and also the y-axis. And as soon as we put in the border, you can see that we have a 
border stroke on our button here now. So let's just add some uh, font weight here. Let's uh, set that to medium. And let me just also change the text here to a smaller size. Just like so. All right. Let's also set that to uppercase and round it. All right. Looking pretty good. All right. Now let me just go up here and uh, just maybe put in some uh, styling here. Because if you look at the preview window, you can see that the text is actually pretty close to our email subscribe section. So before that, let me just refine the paragraph here for our newsletter. So let's just make that a bit bolder. And I think that's uh, pretty good. Now let me just add here some flex for our styling here. Give it some gap. And also justify them to center here all right okay that looks really good now all that is left is to set the margin or padding in between the text below and our newsletter so let me just go up here on our division maybe add a margin bottom here just like so all right, that's looking uh, pretty nice. So we have set our email subscribe card. At this point, you can just uh, not use these components here. You can see if I go to the full screen mode, that looks fine here. And if we go back to our code here, again, you can utilize the components here. But then Tailwind also provides like complete section components on their website. So for example, if we actually look at here, you can see that we have the borders, the fonts, we have um, other divisions. So let me just add some class, class here first, by the way, before we forgot. So I'm just going to be adding a, a margin a left here of auto and set that to margin bottom of six. All right, so that's looking pretty nice. So we have refined that area. Now let me just go back to Tailwind css.com and like i mentioned earlier you can just go here and just go to components and actually look for a, a section that you can easily add inside your website so for example i'll be um maybe just choose the stack layouts here all right okay this is i think this is not the right area but then yes you can use those if you need to i'm looking for the section here so let me just go up here and maybe i'll just click on templates yep this is this are the templates that you can easily use for your projects too let me just um, go back to components here and yes here in the page section we can just go to the feature section and we can get this uh, free code here we can just copy that and then just go up to let's say on the, um, next to the main section and just paste this and you can see that we have copied that section easily from the website it's pretty easy actually so aside from using the components tailwind has a already made sections for you some are actually free and uh, some actually are needed to be subscribed before you can access them or you need to buy that certain component to actually use them inside your project now this way you can uh, just modify those are things that you wanted to change and uh, just use the template so that it would be a good starting point for your project so looking at this website that we've made so far we have did a lot already so we've added our email subscription card here and on our next lesson we're going to be starting to create our pricing grids for our project so without further ado let's go ahead and start on our next lesson. All right, so our pricing grid section will be pretty much similar with our testimonial here. So if you see in the full screen mode, we have a three columns for our testimonial. So let's just go back here to the code and I'll just create a comment here so that we can easily find our price grid section if we need to. So I'll just type that in here just like so and then we're going to create a new section for our price grid so we have an opening and closing tag for the section 
And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just uh, going to be adding some class for our section here. So I'll just create a class here and then I just add, um, let's say, a container class here for styling. I'm going to be adding a margin for the y-axis, which is 24, a padding, which is a 6 for the x-axis, and just an auto for the x-axis of our margin also. Down here, I'm going to be adding a division, and I'm going to give it a class of margin bottom 32, so we have some space in there. So I'll just prepare also the text color that we need so that whenever we put on an element inside of it, we also have a color prepared for it already. So I'm going to add a class for this heading that we've added inside this div class. And I'm going to make it bold, set it to center, give it a, a margin bottom of 12. And uh, I think I'm just going to leave it at 12. All right, that's uh, looking good. I'm going to add the text here, which is pricing. So now it's just showing here on our preview window. So that's looking pretty good. And I'm good, just going to add some um, the div on again in here so I'll just create that closing and opening tag for our div and inside of this tag we'll be adding some elements or styling so we have grid and the grid columns three so we have three columns for this section just uh, like in our testimonial section on our previous video let's just um, give it some gap and again let's uh, just enclose this to another div so that we can easily uh, manage each element or section. All right, so now that we have this um, class here, I'll also be adding uh, some div again so that we can add our elements for uh, this column. So we'll be giving it a, a block styling, a rounded corners. Let's also give it a shadow or uh, some a box shadow. Aside from that, let's also give it a background of maybe just uh, 600 for the gray here. Just like so. Now, um, let me just add some more here. I'm going to be giving it a height of a full, which is a set to 100% for the height. Let's also create another div in here. And once again, we're going to just uh, style this division again. So we're going to be adding some padding here. Let's uh, just put 6 on this one. So we'll also be just adding some border here and give that border a color of gray 300. And let's uh, center the text here, just like so. So now you can see it here. And another thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to be adding a paragraph for our content here. So I'm going to give it a class here. What we'll put inside of this uh, paragraph tag is the title for our package. So this is going to be a basic package. And I'm going to be giving it a bold font here so that it would have some intensity on the text here. And yes, that would be fine. The size is fine now. And let's uh, give it some headings of uh, H3 in here. And since we're going to be putting on uh, two texts in one paragraph, what I'm going to do is I'll be just using the H3 as the container for our text. And I'm going to give a strong element here well the strong html tag gives you a, a bold or a font weight of bold for our text as you can see here so we'll be adding the a slash year so we're going to make it like a subscription base so we will be putting on a slash a year here and instead of creating another paragraph we'll be using a small html tag here for that one because if we use the element or another heading or the paragraph tag it will just be creating a break on our line here putting the other text underneath the previous text but then again since we want that on the same row altogether we'd be using the h3 tag or the heading tag as a container and put our text inside of those all right so now we're going to be adding some uh, buttons here i'm going to give it a type of button so we're going to be putting our uh, buy a button here so now we have that in there and I'm going to give it a, a styling so that we can see that clearly in here. So inline block, let's give it a padding. Let's also give it 
a uh, let me just check here so you can see that we have the buy here uh, maybe we want to add uh, some more styling so let's uh, give it a uh, background transparency let's set the text to a blue again let's set it to 500 you can see that it changed in there give it a font medium let's make the font smaller also and let's uh, make the letting tighter gonna give it an uppercase for the text set that to rounded as you can see here just like so now what I'm gonna do and next is I'm gonna maybe just add a hover animation in here so whenever we hover our mouse to the button it will change so you can easily do that by putting on hover text blue dash 700 oh let me just change this to a column just like so and whenever you hover your mouse you can see that it changes the color now I'm gonna add some more styling in here so I'm gonna be adding a hover on the a background of our button here so I'm gonna add hover again and give it a lighter gray so you can see here pretty cool right let's set the focus here so I'll just change that to outline none just like so and uh, let's also add a, a focus ring on this one so uh, don't worry whenever you for example misspell the words or if you don't know what component to use or uh, what's the next word for that component because as you can see the auto suggest comes out whenever you type anything in here and it's basing the components again on the tailwind components so you are sure that you're using the right words or classes so you can see that this is um, looking good now now what I want to do is uh, maybe just add a, a background for our button here so let me just set the BG background color for our a button here so I'm gonna set it to maybe a uh, light gray oh I think we have the same color here so let me just set that to something darker so I'll just change this to 500 maybe 300 should be fine just like so all right that's looking pretty good now uh, let's um add the uh, features that's included on this uh, basic package so what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna go somewhere here and uh, we're gonna copy the ones that we have or worked on earlier so we can just um maybe maybe i'll just start from scratch here so i'm just gonna create a new division just like so again we had an opening and a closing tag I'm gonna give this a class of six for the padding so let's just uh, start from scratch but if earlier we used the unordered list this time I'm gonna show you how you can use the ordered list all right so again if we over our mouse here you can see that the OL element represent a list of items where the items have been intentionally ordered such as that changing the order would change the meaning of the document so if you have the unordered list you also have the ordered list but it's pretty much has the same functionality inside the HTML element so let's just give this a class of empty first let's um, first set up our uh, list class here I'm gonna be putting on a margin bottom here flex it and then let's make sure the items are centered and then I'm gonna put on on our uh, useful links here so I'm just gonna go and click this uh, useful links All right not this one I'm just gonna cancel out of that one what we need is the uh, links for our SVG so I'm gonna open that in here I'll just double click that and minimize this and down here we have the uh, check icon or check SVG down here so we can just copy this just like so control C or command C control V or command V to paste it and you can see that we have that checked in here let's just add some text so unlimited updates and and now you can see that on our card here all right the next thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna be copying that and then just a paste on uh, several instances here so I'm just gonna replace that with this other feature and paste again an instance of it and change the text here again to npm installation just like so All right it's looking pretty good right 
So after this, we're just going to be copying this whole card here and then paste it like two more times. So we have three columns set up for our pricing grid here. So I'm just going to find the end of this card here. So you can know that you're looking at the right card if you click on the division or that element tag inside and you'll know that the start is up there. You'll see that there's a highlight, a dark gray highlight on the division and you'll know that that is the beginning or the end of that division. So let me just copy this and then just uh, going to check and maybe go down here. So don't worry whenever you make mistakes of copying the containers that goes along with all of the contents you can easily just press on control zero command c to undo it so let me just copy and paste it here all right so as you can see here we have pasted it inside the or outside the wrong container so we might need to undo this so that we can just copy the correct divisions that we need to copy so Again, control Z or command Z to undo that. So control Z or command Z. And then you might need to go up on uh, maybe just this spot side of the division. We've gone a way to out. So we need to be inside of this column here. So you be copying only at uh, this area right here. So this is the closing tag and let's just copy this area or this whole content here and then just paste it underneath that. Just like so. Now we've got it on the right container. We're going to do that one more time. All right. And at this point, you can see that we can easily just modify the contents of that card you don't need to start from scratch again and go all over those styling or adding classes or adding the text again so inside your html website when you have the template you can easily adjust a use that same template to redesign or just build your website just like what we're doing in here so I'm going to be just adding another feature in here. And then we can just easily change and uh, modify the text here. So let's um, just add some code examples. Let me just add one more here. I'm going to be putting premium snippets. All right. That's looking good. And uh, down here, we're going to change this to enterprise. I'll just type in enterprise there. That change the pricing to 499, just like so. And then we're going to be adding uh, more features for our enterprise package. So, depending on uh, what you want to achieve, of course, you'll be making a different set of pricing grids but as for me what i'm trying to achieve here is like to show a pricing package for the services that we offer just for an example in this project so i'm just going to add a more here then let's just copy that again and then paste that in here and then let's just change the text here to premium support all right just like so so as you can see, the other cards also adjust if we or when we're adding a more features on the other card. And that's because they're all inside the same grid column. And that's the power of Tailwind. So whenever you use the components, they are actually set to be responsive and go along with the other templates that you're using with them. So for example, in this case we're using grid and grid columns so this is looking pretty nice now we have set up our pricing section so on our next lesson we're going to be looking at how we could add a product model for our pricing grids
After building our pricing width section, it is now time to build our model. So when you click, there should be a pop-up for our product. So let's just tidy this up first. And, and if you're not familiar with a model, it's like a, a pop-up card that shows a product or depending on what you want to show to your audience or visitors. So let's just uh, go up in here and uh, we can just put it here on top of our price section. So I'm just going to create a comment here so that we'll know that this is the uh, model section or the uh, model content. So down here, we can uh, set another div. So let me just uh, fix a comment here. All right. It's looking good. So once again, be careful on typing any commands inside the HTML or inside the text editor because small mistakes like that could actually lead to your code not working. And as you notice, we just need to do some backspacing on the comment and that fixed the division to uh, make it available again. And if you didn't do that, you'll notice that the division is also grayed out. So we cannot actually use that or it's not being read inside the HTML code here. All right, so now we have the ID of a model in here. And if you're also not familiar with IDs, as you've noticed earlier, the ID actually represents a unique identifier. So you can only put a one word inside the ID and it will serve as your unique identifier that you can use, let's say, for a certain or specific styling or class or even you can use it for a JavaScript. So we have set our division here and we have set the opacity for our division. You can see that we have a overlay. This is going to be the overlay. and the background for our uh, model here so we're just gonna leave it at that and we're gonna add another division in here and this is we're gonna be putting our model so let's just add a class here flex all right just like so and then uh, let's just uh, make this a screen on a minimum screen size so let's just make that full and also center it add some padding add some center alignment for our text here and I'm going to give it a padding of 4. And I think let's just uh, delete the padding first. Let's just add the contest before we check what we need to add more. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is um, let's just add another div here so that we can easily uh, manage all of our rows or columns or a group of content. So with this, I'm going to be adding a class or styling. So let's just make this or add a transform styling in here. The overflow should be hidden. So it will contain all of the contents inside of this container. So it will not look like it's actually overlapping the edges of our card or container here. What it will do is it will hide whatever is overflowing on that container and it will not show it outside the container itself. Well, let me just add another division in here. And let's just give this a class. And maybe let's just um, leave this a division or a class empty for now. And let's check if we need that later. So, but then I think let's just delete this division and let's just put the image class directly. So I'm going to be putting the image tag give it a, a class and the source um let's just look on a good picture here on pexels.com so once again it's a free stock photos that you can use so in here i'm just going to type in code projects or uh, let's just type in code here and i think i'll choose this i'll just right click on that choose the link for this image and then let's go back to our code and paste it inside our source here just like so all right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding some class for our product model here. So you can see that the image is too large right now. So let's just set the padding first or the margin at the bottom. And all right, so let's just another division down here underneath the image. And let's just give it a class and set a margin top of it. Let's set the width for this one to a one half of the screen size and also the x-axis margin to auto all right now inside here we're going to be putting on our contents for our product model here so starting with the heading i'm going to give it a class of 
a larger text in here and a, a font a medium and uh, I'm gonna give it a letting of six and a text color of something darker here just like so okay so let's type some text here so I'm gonna be putting advanced features All right. Now I think I want to make it uppercase too. So I'll just add uppercase here. And then the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to be adding another division here so that we can put on the list of features that this package has. So I'm going to give it a class here and add some styling. So I'm going to be putting a margin top here so that we have some space from the title. And I'll just set this to 8 here. So like so I'm gonna give it a half of the width here and of course also a margin auto for the x-axis so that's looking good let me just modify the class that we have here on the top I think we just need a three here for the margin top just set the text alignment to center in this one and yeah that's looking fine going to be adding uh, the features for our package here so uh, I can just go up here and just copy the ones that we've created earlier so I'm just uh, gonna look on for our advanced feature and just start from the or opening tag for the ordered list and just copy all the way down here and then we'll paste that on our model card here so where is it all right so it's just somewhere in here we just need to actually and that's why the commenting are actually important so that you can easily lo locate whichever section you want to put in your contents because copying and pasting would also be one of the things that you will be mostly doing when you're doing codes so that you can easily not start from scratch anymore and just use templates from the ones that you've created already so now that we have pasted it in there can see that we have it on the preview window and uh, what we're gonna do next in here is that we're just gonna be a refining at this more and we're just gonna go up here so let me just go to the actual container I'm gonna be adding some class here so I'll just put this to a relative and the Z index actually represents the hierarchy of your contents inside your project so we want to make this at the uh, very top so that it wouldn't be a showing, let's say, on, on top of any other or below other contents of your codes here or elements here. So we want it to be on top of your navigation, your body, and all other content because this is a model that's going to be popping up whenever you press on the buy button. So it should go on top of everything all right so that's all set in here all right now in here i'm going to just be adding a, a max width and let's just set that to large here and you can see that we have adjusted the size of our model card here or product card all right that's looking really good but um we want to make the a model to stay on its position whenever we scroll so let me just scroll down here because i'm looking for certain container here so let me just go back to our model section and maybe uh, down here i'm just going to be adding the button first before we affix uh, that scrolling so on this um part of the division i'm going to be adding it uh, just below uh, this division right here so i'm going to create another division for our button so we'll be putting on the check out button and the cancel button so that we can have a, the option to either check it out or cancel it out let's just give this a background of a gray and let's set the padding for the x-axis and y-axis just like so and after that let's also uh, just check on a button here give it a type of button all right and let's just add some styling for our button here all right so a width full so that it would be a relative to the container itself 
let's uh, justify it to center and give it a round corner all right should be good and inside our button we're going to be adding to our type here so let me just also put on the closing tag for our button and just give it the checkout text here just like so as you can see it's outside our model card so let's just put it inside here and you can see that it's still outside so maybe we might need to put it a little bit more inside but then let me just fix the other button first so that we can add it all together later after we create or build the cancel button so let me just add the a border here just like so give it a background of red and you can see it happening on our preview window here all right let's also set the font weight to medium let's just add the text color to white and that's looking pretty good so last thing i'm gonna do is add some shadow on the text here all right all right now that we have this button we can just use this same template for the the button of our cancel button so i'm just gonna copy this press enter here and paste that and just just change this to cancel then we'll just be changing on the color for uh, this button here so first of all i'm going to be setting the text size here or the margin to three for the top and add a, a border here of a gray so let's just um, change the color for the border of this cancel button here let's change this to white just like so and you can see that in here i'm gonna just change also the text color to something of a dark gray so let's just set it in here all right just like so now we can copy uh, this container containing our buttons and uh, just add it inside this one all right so now it's inside our uh, model card here for our product so the only thing that we need to do is just uh, fix on so let me just check it in full screen so you can see that as we scroll it seems to be scrolling along with the contents and what we want to do is just make sure it's fixed to our screen whenever we scroll here. so i'm just gonna check it here so i'm just gonna go up here on the top of our model container and i think what i'm gonna do is um, add another division and then we'll be housing all of the contents on that division so maybe i'll just place it here so i'm going to create a division in this area here of course we want to include all of the what's inside our model and then in this class here we're going to be adding a fixed position so the fixed position makes sure that all of the contents inside that container will be fixed on the screen let's also add the overflow the inset and again the z index so that we are sure that it is on top of every other elements all right i'm gonna be putting the closing tag somewhere here all right just like so now you can see that as you scroll just staying on your screen here it's actually not scrolling along the other elements so you can see that happening on our preview window all right so let's see what we can uh, refine here more so i think i want to adjust the size of our model card it's quite large for our screen at the moment so in here i'm just gonna go here to our width and i'm just gonna set this to let's, let me just look on the size here again this is gonna be a trial and error so just need to look on the uh, right size for our uh, model card here all right so half of the width looks nice in here you can see that you'll see all of the edges and even if you go on full screen there you go you and see it's actually a uh, nice but then since it's half it's actually basing on the actual screen size so whenever we go to the full screen mode it's basing on that and it's not showing the whole package so Let's just uh, set and again test out which size is best for us in here. Let me just 
put on a height here maybe let me just go somewhere around a half here all right still not looking good let's just set that to something 60. all right you can see the text are actually not showing underneath maybe somewhere around one third yep i think one third is it's quite nice and uh, yeah i think we can now uh, fix this by changing the width so let me just change this to something a bit smaller here all right looking pretty good pretty good so but then i'm not satisfied so yep this one is perfect so even if we go to a full screen here you can see that it's showing all of the contents even the edges it and we still have some spacing on the upper and lower area of our website here so that's uh, pretty much the uh, model that we are looking for all right so let me just go back to our code here and uh, let me just add a hidden so what the hidden styling does is to hide or put on a styling of display none on your element here so that this is what will happen if we press on the button so we're going to be adding the uh, javascript functions on our upcoming lessons for now we'll be focusing on a uh, building and designing the elements for our landing page so let me just add again the hidden here just like so all right so we can also set or use opacity if we want to but then that's pretty much it that's how you create your a model section for your project we are now down to our final section here which is our image gallery so if you go to full screen mode we're going to be adding it underneath our pricing grid so let's just go back to the code here and down here let's just go way down all over the footer so that we'll know that's the last section and just in between the last section and the footer we'll be adding a comment so that we'll know that this is the image gallery section so let me just close that and i'll be adding another section here. so let me just change this to a project section all right it's looking good and let's um, add another section in here opening and closing tag for the section and we're going to be giving this a class again so you can see how the workflow goes so we create sections we add clash and uh, or class and style we change uh, some classes or styling if we don't like what it looks like and again it's trial and error that's why you start from a graphic editing software so that you can easily create a wireframe or a layout for your website and from there you can use it as a guide to a follow and what I recommend using is Figma because when you're working with Figma you can also create a prototype which lets you use or use your created layout and make it look like it's a website already and it also has a like a code section wherein you'll be able to just copy and paste the styling that you've used in there and I just put it inside your project so now that we have set the divisions for our container here so I'm just gonna be adding a class here let's um, add some text center in here and then I'm gonna be adding a max width of free excel so i actually um am not too familiar with the sizes but then with the auto suggest you can see what sizes is available and if you want to see all of the sizes you can once again go to tailwindcss.com and in there you'll be able to see all of the components that you want to look so if you want to check on grids if you want to check on let's say width and height and all about the text components that you can use you can all see it there so we've added a text color of gray in here and let me just create a space here and I'm going to be adding a paragraph so I'm going to be adding a text placeholder and once again we can go to our a lorem ipsum generator so I'll just go here to this address bar and just type in lorem ipsum so that you can search it and I'll just use this second link here all right so uh, once that loads you can see that we have generated a placeholder and we can just copy this control c or command c to copy that and then once again go back to our application and paste that with control v or command v all right let's just give it a, a margin volume of six 
and a padding of two for the bottom all right so that's looking pretty good in there now that we have a set the title and our placeholder for our projects we can now add our images or the image gallery so it's actually pretty simple so we're just going to be adding some columns and rows in here so if you've actually checked on a lot of websites you can also uh, use it as a reference or as the inspiration or an inspiration for your newly created websites all right so we're just adding some flex here and also we're adding flex wrap which uh, allows the flex items to uh, wrap here and what that basically does is it actually uh, lets the containers or the divisions or group of elements you've added to adjust whenever the screen size adjusts and we'll actually look on more the responsiveness of our website on the upcoming videos I'm just going to be adding the image now so the alt or the alternative is actually a html element which allows us to show a text whenever the image is not loaded yet so you can see that happening on our preview here so when we put the gallery we saw that text in there and this lets our users see the kind of image that they're not seeing whenever it does not load on the website so once again we're just going to be looking for a photo here i'm going to be just putting in projects and let's just filter this to a square i think let's just go back to horizontal here and let's just look on some random image that we can use i think i'll use this and get the link go back to our application here paste that in there and then you can see that in here so let's just set on some other class here so i want to make the object cover and also centered so when we put on a object cover attribute or property inside a class it makes sure that the image is actually a fit inside the container so let's also make that rounded you can see the corners are now round and what we're gonna do now is we can simply just copy this whole image or this container containing the image and we can just simply paste it to create a several image that we can use to create our image gallery so i'm just gonna copy this and then down here just um press enter and paste that several times just like so and at this point we can uh, just easily change on by going back to pixel and just get another link here paste that and replace it here so let's just get some other image Go back to our application paste it in here and down here let's just copy this go back to our application paste it again you can see that some of the things are actually repetitive and because you already have a template it's also much easier than creating it for the first time so let's just copy this and just paste it in here just like so and now we have completed building our project section so let me just go to the full screen here so we're actually or we've actually started from scratch here we've worked all the way from the header section or the navigation to main section testimonial page the pricing read the projects the email subscribe so on and so forth and now we have completed our simple landing a website In this module, we're going to look at how we could design the website that we worked on earlier to be responsive in mobile view. So right now, we're going to be working inside a Visual Studio. And if you don't know how to start with the Visual Studio, you can go back to our previous lesson, Getting Started, and you'll see how you can install the software and all of the components that you need in order for us to work with Tailwind. So we're going to be using this because the JavaScript function is not working in Tailwind Play. But then here, we're gonna be implementing as some of the a JavaScript function, like we're gonna learn how we could design a hamburger button and add some animations on it. 
Aside from that, we'll also be designing our uh, menu like this one and uh, make it also open or close whenever we click on the hamburger menu. Aside from that, we'll also look at how we could make the other elements of our website responsive to a mobile view. And finally, we're going to be looking at how we could uh, make the navigation for our menu to make a smooth scrolling using JavaScript. So if I click this and if I go on a certain section, you can see that the scrolling is smooth on each section. So all of this and more, we're going to be learning that on our next lesson. In this video, we're going to be creating or designing a hamburger button and add some animations on it. So again, we have our a website open up in here and we have it open side by side with our Visual Studio. So to open that, you can press Ctrl B or Command B on your keyboard to open the menu. And then in the index.html, right click it and open it with Live Server. Alt L or Option L is the keyboard shortcut. And once you have that, go to Terminal. Click new terminal and um, here make sure you're using git bash or command prompt. So click the git bash and we'll be running the npm run dev. So that whenever we make changes, the style will be previewed on our window here. So I'll just close that. And I think we're all set here. So what we're going to do is we're going to be creating the hamburger menu. So what we'll uh, do first is I'll just click this. And you can see that in here, you can go to more tools. And in here, you can click on Responsive Design Mode to activate or to enable this Responsive Mode in Mozilla Fox. F12 will be for other browsers. So I'm just going to place it down here. And I'm going to comment it out so that we know that this is the mobile menu section. Just like so. I'm going to create a div here. All right. So again, opening and closing tag. Let's just add a class here. So I'll delete this right a dash a zero here. And again, the absolute property in CSS lets you make the container, whatever is inside that division, to not be affected by the positioning. So the position will be absolute. And you can set a, a left or right or a top or bottom position for that one or margin. So it's um, like a padding or margin. So once we add that, we'll be also adding a class in length for our button we'll add the flex property we'll set the items to center justify that to center and I'll also be adding a round corner for our button here let's just set this to 400 for the color and we'll be adding some animations now so we'll hover or once we hover our mouse let's uh, set the background color to gray 700 let's also change the text here to a white Aside from that, when we focus our mouse, we're going to be setting the uh, outline to a none and also set the focus for our ring here to, let's say, I'll just check on to two. Set the focus also to ring inset. And next up, we'll be setting the ring outline or the ring to white, just like so. So once we've uh, set all that, we'll just create the closing tag here. And I'm going to create a, a span HTML element here so that we can modify the contents that we have here. So I'll be adding a class of, I'll just delete this. I'm going to add a 2XL in here. So in here, we're going to be adding an icon so we can go to ionic icon here so you can just type it on your browser and you can use the first link here just click that and in here we're going to be installing a cdn so we're going to be using this script here and you can see that we need to add this inside your html element and we need to put this inside the body tag just right before the end of the body tag here so once we copy that control c or command c we're going to go all the way down here just like so and we're gonna place it down here below the footer Control v or command v to face paste that all right so once we are done we're gonna go back to the icons and just search the menu just like so and you can see that we can just copy it by clicking it now up here we're gonna go back to that space that we have created for this icon 
so we can just go down here and just paste it in here so once you save that let me just remove this let's go back to our document and once we save this you can see that we have the a menu here for the full screen so let me just hide this first I'm gonna place hidden here just like so and now we can see that hamburger a menu icon so what we're gonna do next is um we're gonna be adding some animations for this one so what i want to happen is whenever you click the hamburger button it changes to an x icon so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna add an on click function in here so we're gonna use javascript for this one we're gonna name this menu and just like so and then right now nothing is gonna happen for this one so we're gonna be creating a new file I'm gonna name this index.js and this is where we are gonna put the uh, javascript codes so to make sure that this is working what i'm gonna do is um we need to put it or specify where it will read the code so we need to tell html where to read those so we're gonna be putting script here but i'm gonna change this to dot slash or forward slash index.js because that's where our codes or javascript will be then we can go back here and test it out i'm just going to put alert hello here so once i save this we should be able to see an alert of hello just like so all right let me just delete this and now we can start working on our code here so i'm going to create a function i'm going to name this a menu so if you don't know where we got this name we got this name from our index.html here so we named it on our click function here and we can go back to our index.js and gonna create a function so we're gonna be using an arrow function and what's inside this brackets will be the action that will happen whenever we click on that button i'm gonna create a variable select menu and it's gonna be equal to a document query selector so we're gonna select a certain element inside our html which is name mobile menu so we're going to be using this on our next lesson so i'm going to word wrap this so that we can see this clearly so i'm just going to prepare it but we're not going to be using it for now but this is the code that we'll be using or will be using for that icon so i'm going to set the e dot name and we're accessing the name here so down here you can see we have name here so we're going to access that and if that name is equal to menu which is the one that we saw earlier we're gonna put a condition so if that is true we're gonna set that name to be equal to close and at this close if we look at the icons here let me just type in close here and click this x here so we can see it's down here but this one is outline this one is circle outline let me just click on the field and you can see that we have a name close here so we're changing the text inside that name by uh, using the conditional statements let me just go back to our preview window here so we're gonna set this to close and if, if it's not true then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that e dot name let me just click that and we're gonna set that to a menu let me just delete this extra apostrophes here or quotation so this one should work so we'll save that and if we click it you'll notice that whenever we click it the icon changes to the close icon pretty cool right now you wouldn't be able to see the hover effect here because there's a bug in a desktop when you're viewing the mobile view so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna just remove this hide here and as you can see when i hover my mouse on the full screen mode we are able to see the hover effects that we've added earlier or the animations that we've added earlier pretty cool right so if we have this viewed on our mobile device we'll also be able to see that animation but then i think there's no point on adding a hovering effect on the mobile screen because you'll be tapping them and not be dragging them all right so let me just delete this so that we can see this properly and now you can see that we have that hovering animation so that's how you can create your a mobile or hamburger menu and add some animations on it
now that we've set our hamburger menu let's now set our menus for our website so down here i'm gonna just uh, create a comment here again so that we'll know that this is for the uh, mobile menu section or buttons so we have set that here i'm gonna create a division again right opening and closing tag and i'll be adding a class for this one so let me just type in class here and i'll be putting in a name here an id so that we can identify this uniquely so this is the one that we prepared earlier on our previous video so we're going to be adding some javascript again so that we can make this menu appear as we click the button so i'm going to be adding a sm hidden here so we are setting the hidden property to a certain screen size and we'll look at that later on in greater detail so let's um add a button here so i'm gonna set that to type button and class actually i'm not gonna use a button instead i am i'm gonna be directly putting in an anchor tag for this one so i'll just delete that and i'll just put in a division first and i'm gonna set the class here so i'll just um put a space let me just delete that guy call in there so y dash one Add some paddings just like so and inside this container i'm going to be putting our anchor tags for the menu so I'll just set the href first to a hashtag so we don't have any links yet so let's just put a placeholder for this class or styling i'm going to be putting a background also let's set that to a dark value set the text to white set it to block and add some paddings and We'll also make the corners rounded in here all right just like so so this is going to be looking good so i'm going to type the home now and you can see that appearing on our menu here now let's just copy this three more times here so we have this template and we'll be using it and we're just going to replace the home to testimonials and put in price here and projects for this one just like so you can see it here and let's just modify the background here so instead i'm going to be adding the hover animation here or effect so we don't want them to be all the same we're just showing the home to be the active one that's why we have that darker gray background in there but then for the others which is not active yet we'll be changing on the color so I'll just copy this and paste it here to the others tag here just like so save that and you can see that we have that in here so let me just put in the full screen because uh, as i mentioned earlier we have a, a bug on the small screen you can see as i hover we have that hovering animation or effect for our menu All right let me just go back to our mobile view here so now that we have our menu set let's um add the a javascript function so that whenever we click on the hamburger button it's appearing or the menu up here so i'm just gonna go back here and what we'll do is we'll add some functionality on the conditional so we can put a comma to set other condition so we'll um, access select menu and we're going to be putting some style of uh, opacity here we'll set that to 100 like so so that when we have the menu on close state it will set the opacity to 100 and if we have the menu on the open state or the menu state or the hamburger menu icon will set the opacity to zero so i'm gonna put in opacity is zero here so we don't see that and now if we click this you can see that it's showing the menu and hiding the menu whenever we have the x or the hamburger icon let's add some transition I'm putting some transition an easy in property and a duration of maybe 200 now if we click this we have a smooth appearing animation for our menu since we are working with tailwind components most of the elements or contents that we have in here are already responsive but then some still need some effects saying so down here if we go to testimonials you can see that this is not looking good 
we need to affix this to make it nicer and mobile view and also this a pricing section so if i go to the uh, full screen mode here you can see that it's also the same for the a tablet view or kindle view and um, let's just go back to our mobile view here so let's just wait for it to load all right so you can see that it's not looking nice for our mobile view here it's not that responsive but then the other elements are actually good so let's go to the tailwind website here so you can see we have the responsive here you can just type in responsive and just click on that responsive design app and you can see we have this breakpoints here and we can use this to refine the responsiveness of our website so you can see there's an example and down here you can see how we can uh, use this breakpoints and there's also an example so if i click and drag this you can see that this one is really responsive to different screen sizes so we can use this breakpoints here so going back to our preview here you'll be fixing this and we're going to be using breakpoints so we can go down to the testimonial section all right so i can just press ctrl f on my keyboard command f to search that just like so and down on our grids here we wanted to have a, its own grid i can use the lg breakpoint here so i'll just uh, type in lg so that we will have its own grid and once i save this let me just say that you can see that the LG here has a breakpoint. So if the screen size has a minimum width of 1024, it will change it to this one. So it will only make the grid column to 3 if it reaches that minimum breakpoint. So we'll also do the same for our pricing here. So let me just go down here it's quite far so i think i'm just gonna search it i'm gonna be putting price all right just like so and i'm gonna be adding the lg breakpoint also in here save that and you can see that it's a now a fix so we don't need to actually look on other things here if you look at the kindle here it's also looking good let me just go to the full screen mode and you can see that if we're on the full screen mode it's a uh, going back to that column three property so it's only applying the column three grid if you are on a, a large screen size so that's how you can utilize the breakpoints or the tailwind components in order for you to create a responsive website so in this lesson we're going to be creating a smooth scroll for our website so right now if you click this any of this menu here you can see that it's just refreshing the page because we have just set a hashtag in here so aside from using the href to go to links we can also use it for ids and what that does is it will route the view to that section where you have placed those ids so i'm just going to be putting the testimonials here going to be putting all right we got that wrong so let me just copy that paste it here i'm going to paste that here and we're going to be putting the price here for our third anchor tag and projects in here all right that's all set now we can go to our section here and just add an identifier unique identifier which is an id so we'll place that as home and we'll, i'll just search this testimonial add an id in here put in testimonial just make sure that it's the same as what you have put it on top of the menus so i'll be searching price here all right so we can i see it so place the price here okay i'll just scroll down here and look for it so let me just type that again just to make sure i'm be the price and it's just really a showing three word here for the price so let me just scroll all the way down here let me just look where we added that price here all right so this is for the model so it's just right below this one just scroll down here and all right so we put pricing to the price so in here i'm going to be putting an id again of price and the next thing is i'll just scroll down here and let's look for the last moment uh, there you go i'll put in an identifier again an id of project will be it's actually the project not testimonial so Whenever we click here now, you can see that 
we're going to those a section but it's not that smooth or there is actually no smooth functionality so we're going to be using javascript to create smooth scrolling in here so i'm just going to go up to the menu here so it's just right up in here and let me just scroll up here a little bit more and there you go all right so we're going to be adding an on click function here again so let me just change this first and we're going to be placing this on a, a javascript avoid zero because we don't need that to go to that certain id we're going to be putting it inside a function and what javascript void zero does is to actually do nothing so it wouldn't refresh the page we'll just give it a click function without any function actually so i'm gonna put it on click here and set that to home all right i'm gonna copy this i'm gonna paste it in here change that to testimonials i'm gonna do it two more times replace this with price and finally here i'm gonna paste it and put projects all right so let's save that and i'm gonna press down control b plan b and let's go to index.js and let's uh, add some javascript code in here so the first thing that we're going to do is create a to home function so i'm just gonna type that in here so went to home and we're gonna create an arrow function so inside this brackets we're going to be placing our functions or we're going to access the document which is the whole body or the whole document that we have we're going to get the element by id and remember we have set the id so first is home and once we access that home id or the section that has that id of home we're going to scroll into view to that one and we're going to set the behavior of that scroll into view function to smooth, just like so. We're going to copy this three more times because we're going to be doing the same command for other uh, menus. We're just going to change this to testimonials, just like the one we have named earlier for each menu buttons, just like so. And we're just going to change, of course, the ids to the same ones we have created all right switch this to project save that and let me just cancel this all right so let's look at this one so I'll click on testimonials you can see that it's smooth here pricing is smooth projects all right so all right so that seems to be not working so let's look what happened here so i'm gonna go back here let's see on the HTML here, so I'll just go down here. Let's see, I'm gonna type projects. You can see that we have um, 90 projects, so maybe we missed an S here. So let me just go back to our index.js here. All right, so down here. All right, so we got to add S here, still not working. Just go back here and go to our menu up here. Let's see what we missed here. All right, so okay, so we add two projects here. Let's see on our index.js if we have set the function to have an S2. All right, so we don't have an S there, so let's just save that. And once again, that's working now. All right, so that's how you can easily add a smooth scrolling with JavaScript and using the Tailwind components inside your website. In this module, we're going to be implementing a dark mode with Tailwind CSS and a JavaScript on our project here. So you can see that I'm using the template from play.tailwindcss.com. And if I press this toggle button for dark mode, you'll notice that it will go to dark mode. So you can see the background changes to a dark one. And also some of the text here also change to a lighter color. So we'll be learning how to do this on the upcoming lesson. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be designing our dark mode button here. So after that, we'll be setting the color mode 
with a JavaScript. And we will all learn that on the upcoming video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start on our first lesson. So we're going to design our dark mode button here. So we're using this template and let me just go to the play.tailwindcss.com here. So I'll just click it here and you can see that I just copied this line of codes here. So you can see that if we go to the preview here, we have the same template. We just go back here. I copied this from this line up to the last division here and just paste it in our Visual Studio. So let me just cancel that. And in here, I'm just um, going to be placing uh, this template. Let's um, create a dark mode. So first, we need to uh, set the terminal. So you can uh, just choose git bash and just type in npm run a dev. And with this uh, running, we can see whatever styling we put on our code here. All right, so now that it's all set, we can uh, also just go here and um, maybe just go here and uh, click the word wrap so that we're sure that we'll see all of the text or the codes here. And I'm just going to place it here. So I'll just create a comment so that we'll know that this is our area for the dark mode button. So just like so. And then uh, down here, I'm just going to create a, a division. So once again, we're going to be putting on some contents and we're going to be styling uh, this uh, content here. So I'll just put a class. And inside this class, I'm going to be styling our dark mode. So if I go here, let's just go to Ionic icon here we can click this first link we're going to be looking at the icon for our dark mode button so first we're going to be clicking the usage and copy the cdn here because we're not going to be able to see the icon that we'll be using from this website if we don't import it inside our html code here just like so at this point we can now click on the icons here and use the ionic icons component so Right here, we have the dark. We'll just click on the field and copy this. And we're going to be pasting that in there. So let us look at here. You can see we have it in here. Now let's just um, set it at center. So I'll just place this at text center. And I'll also be increasing the size here. So it's uh, kind of considered as a font here. So now it's centered and we have it at a larger size. Let's set a, a margin bottom of 10. Just like so. And... Let's also change the color to this one to a darker gray. All right. And I want to add some hover animation. So you can see that we have it there. Let's just add some hover animation here. So I'll just type hover. And whenever we hover our mouse, you want it to set to a lighter gray here, just like so. So we have save it. And we'll also make a cursor pointer. So whenever we hover the mouse, you can see that it's changing to a pointer here, just like so. All right, so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to be adding some animation so that whenever we click it, it will change to a, a different icon. So let me just create the index.js here. We're going to be adding some JavaScript on this one. And I'll just check if we have connected it. So alert, hello. And if we save this, we should be able to see it. Since it's not connected, we can go back to index.html and just put on a link here so that we can tell HTML where to find our uh, JavaScript code. So I'll just um, put period forward slash and the index.js. And now if we save, you can see that we have that in here. Let me just go back to index.js and let me just delete this. At this point, we can now put our codes or JavaScript codes. So I'm going to be putting a toggle mode function. So I'm going to name this toggle mode now this can be any name but then i'm just using toggle mode so that we can easily determine that this is for toggling the dark mode i'm going to create the arrow function and inside the arrow function is our action for this javascript function so let us alert this first save that and if we click our dark mode button here we should be able to add a functionality on this one so i'm going to put on click and put on the name that we have added earlier, toggle mode. I'm going to enclose it with a parenthesis to make it a function. And we click this, you can see that it's now activating the function that we have. Now let's look at for the light icon here. All right, so we want to toggle to this icon whenever we click that dark mode button. So you can see that it has a name Sunny. So we're going to be 
pretty much doing the same that we did on the menu that we worked on earlier. So we're going to do the same JavaScript command here. So if the e.name, so let me just correct that, it's going to be equal to the moon name here. If it's true, we're going to set that name to sunny. And if it's not true, we're going to say, set it to moon again. Right, just like so. So we're going to save this. We're going to come back here. And if we click our button here, it will toggle to the light mode. So let me just check here. I'll just change the view and word this wrap. And now we can see all the codes. So now if I click this, we'll see that it's changing to the light icon. So it's uh, pretty much telling us that if we click it, we're going to be in dark mode. And if we click it back again, we're going to be in light mode again. So that's how you can easily create the dark mode button for our project. Now that we have created our dark mode button, it is now time to implement the dark mode feature. So I'll just go here and let's look at the documentation for our dark mode here on the Tailwind website. So I'll just click here, click on the dark mode here. And you can see here that um, we can create a dark variant for our project in here so there's an example here and this is how you will implement it there is an example down here so if we scroll down here you can see that we can use a class strategy to implement this dark mode manually but before we can do that we need to also add some exports so you can see we have dark mode here and we're going to be putting class for our dark mode we can use a media and other sources but then we'll be using class for this one so i'll just go here and create a space here and just put in dark mode and set it to class All right just like so so i'm gonna just save that and go back to our index.html file and in here we're gonna be setting our dark styling for each of the element that we needed to be in dark mode so the first thing I'm going to do is I'll set the container where our contents are, like the text and the logos. So I'm just going to go down here and here on this um, class here for this uh, division, I'm going to set the dark variant. And then we'll put in our styling when it's in the dark mode. All right, just like so. And um, now that's all set. Let's also um, maybe just look down here. Uh, maybe on the top here i'm actually going to be changing the uh, background of our body here so let me just find the division for that one so i think it's this one so i'm just um gonna be putting it somewhere maybe at this uh, corner here All right so i'll just place it here so i'm just gonna click it and then i'm just gonna type dark and then i'll set the background color to a something like 700 here all right so i'll set i'll save that and down here let's um just look at the text here so let's um also change the color of the text when it goes to dark mode so if it's like gray right now let's also make that to a lighter color once it goes to dark mode so i can just uh, go down here and for this tailwind css text we'll place a dark variant also i'll just type in dark column and then also put a text color of white just like so all right so um let's also put a dark variant here let's set that to white and then yeah that's looking good so let's just also look for other text here I think we can, uh, yep, we've set up text for this one. Now let's um, just go down here on the Tailwind config.js file. And then we'll also set and put a dark variant here. So I'll just type in space dark here with a column. And then put our uh, styling for this dark mode. All right. So now that's uh, set, let's um, just look at some other areas. Let me just change the, this to a darker gray here. So let me just um, 
look for some other areas that we need to change here so I'll just go down here and maybe also apply a dark variant for this one here so I'll just set that to a dark gray here all right just fix that I think that's looking good and let's just set another one in here all right just like so well i think that's pretty much it so that we can see this i'm gonna go to the body here and then just like in the documentation we just need to add the class dark and then when we save this you can see that we are now in dark mode now let me just change the background of the body here i think we need to set this to a, a darker gray so i'll just set this to maybe 900 save that i think let's just use 800 let me just save that and yep that's looking pretty good all right now that we have a set our a dark mode we can now implement this on our a javascript model so let me let me just add some id here so that we can easily select this on our javascript code all right so let's just put a toggle dark here now that's it let's go to index.js here and we're going to be adding some more arguments for our conditional statement here so let's enclose that to the parentheses and then let's also select our dark mode section here so i'm going to create a variable select toggle and then we're going to be selecting the id that we've just created earlier so for this one, I'm just going to set a, a document dot get or query selector. And then we're going to be specifying the ID that we've created earlier, which is toggle dark. And then in here, we're going to be adding a second argument that if it's true, aside from uh, making the uh, name sunny, we'll also be adding a class to the uh, select toggle a variable, which is the document query selector. So we're going to add the uh, dark class here. Just like so and if it's not true aside from changing it to a moon again we're gonna be toggling it to a remove the dark class so let's just save that and once we click here see that it didn't implement it on our first click and that's because we need to remove it here so let me just remove the class here save that and once we click here so let me just click the button here see that we're toggling that from dark mode to light mode pretty cool right so you can see that as i click this it's actually adding also some uh, transition it's you can see that the there's a fade in effect so you can see we have transition in here some duration and ease in effect that's why uh, whenever we click on our dark mode in here you can see that it's kind of a fading in so that's a good transition that you can use so that's how you can create your dark mode inside the program. In this module, we're going to be designing a form and also be making it fully functional with Tailwind CSS and JavaScript. So you can see that I have the form of website here. So again, we're going to be using Visual Studios for this one as JavaScript because I'm working in play.tailwind.css.com so uh, right now in uh, this contact form we have the email we have a subject that we can put and also a message and uh, once we click the uh, send message button we'll be routed to a page uh, saying that the contact or the form has been successfully sent and we'll receive that on our email so for the next lessons we're going to be designing the form first after that, we'll be creating the uh, JavaScript link validation to uh, make this form fully functional. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start on our first lesson. So we're going to start designing our form here. You can see we have a blank template. And now uh, let me just press down Control V or Command V. So we have our index.js here. We have the uh, npm run dev running so we can now start designing our website so i'll just delete this i'm going to put a section here and 
Forms or contact forms are actually a, one of the a, most important components of a website because it lets your a user or a visitors engage with the creator of the website or with the website itself. So in this lesson, we're going to be creating a form for our contact form. So um, let's just add this sign it first. I'm going to create a division here. I'm going to set a class here so we don't need this class here. All right, let me just delete that. And we're going to be adding some padding also on the y-axis. Again, PY is the component for the y-axis, which is the top and bottom. So let's also add some margins for our x-axis, which is the left and right, and set that to auto. Once we've set all of this a class here, down here I'm just going to create a heading. So just uh, gonna type in or let's just set the class first so i'm gonna create a class here and i'm gonna uh, just put in a margin bottom of four a text of a four excel so that will have this a in a pretty uh, large font here let's set that to extra bold and uh, let's also center that out so once we have set the color here i'm gonna just click this i'll now set this to contact us save that you can see that it's now in here and then um, down here let's just place a text placeholder so just um, put a paragraph let's go to lorem ips from here so click that click this first link here and then uh, down here let's just copy up to this area only so let me just select that control c or command c Go back to our preview here and just paste that here and save that so we have that on our preview here so let's just add some class so all right so it's still um, outside so let me just delete that just place that inside our class all right let's put some um breakpoints here and if you want to look at the breakpoints you can uh, just uh, go back to our previous lesson and in there you'll be able to see what breakpoints are and you can also check the uh, tailwind css.com so you can see that we have the uh, nice styling for our paragraph here and let's just add our form now so whenever you need to have something submitted or if you want to keep or keep track of the uh, data you need to put it in a form here so we're going to be adding a class for this one so you can see we have added an id which is a unique identifier that we can use later on for our javascript when we are specifying a function for this form and we also have added an action in there which we will also be using to tell html where we will put the data that we'll be inputting on this form here so now let's put a label and the a label element or tag is a use whenever you are putting on some like text for your form here like for the field so for example in this one we're going to be putting a label for our email so i'm going to put in a, a form element of an email here i'm going to put on some class or styling for this label and inside here we're going to be typing your email just like so and down here we're going to be putting our input element so uh, once again this is um, the text field where we'll be typing our data so let's just uh, set that to email and in here i'm going to set it to a name which what we will access later on with our uh, javascript code let's put on some placeholders of a name at email.com and let's just set some class here so i'm just going to type in shadow of um small here background will be light gray set that border gray to 300 let's add some text just like so and also make a rounded for the corners of our field here so let's also set the focus of our uh, ring here to blue so whenever we click on our form here we'll be able to see a, a ring or the outline of that field to a be color blue for the borders. So we'll, we're going to set the width of that field to full. 
and let me just close this let's save that so that we can see what it looks so you can see that it looks pretty nice in here and if you click that you'll see that the border or outline is becoming blue so at this point we can just copy this so that we can set another field so let me just first put in required here and what that does is if we miss that field and we didn't put any info it will require us to put on something in there which we will look on later on so let's just set the full form first so we have copied that and just change this to subject and for this one i'm going to change this to subject also all right just like so and let's just change this placeholder to let us know you how we can help you all right as will say then you can see that it's looking good so since we have the template on the first one we can just copy that and just change on the front end to the info that we want and let's just add another class here for our text area so i'm just uh, going to be adding a style of scroll span too so whenever we get to a small device we set our breakpoint to have a call span of two all right now we have our label here let's just add some class i'm going to set that to font a medium let's uh, set on some text color in here let's set it to a darker gray and uh, you can see that most of the components that we're using here or we're using here are actually the ones that we've used on our previous video so that's why as you do this you will pretty much be familiar with all of the components and you can easily remember and type them that without looking on the tailwind components website all right so let's add our text area so let me just read that and let's add our styling for our text area here all right let's set the block e 2.5 and then what the text area does is to create like a like a kind of a big text field here where you can type in your message just like in a typical email where you put your body for your email so we're just uh, styling that in here and we're almost done here so once we finish this we're gonna save it and then let me just set up the focus on this one so that we'll have that blue outline whenever we focus our mouse on our text area so I'll set that to 500 and let's just uh, put a placeholder here of leave a comment all right good let's um just uh set that here just going to be putting our a name or id here so let's just put a name or id here oh, i think that's um uh, not put it in here i think we need to put it on our input field so let me just delete that put it here on our text area input let's set the id to a message and let's also add a name of message here just like so all right let's um just check this i'll save that now we just hit Control s or command s here and then let us uh, put on some row first before we do that let's put six here and save that all right so that's looking pretty good so you can see that we have a nice big um, text field here for our message so let's just add our final element which is the button here so i'll just set that to type button let us add some class for our button here so i'm going to be putting in a send a message just like so you can see it here and let's just uh, stylize uh, this button here so let's add some padding and for the text let's set that to small set the font to medium so that we have some intensity for that one Let's center it out inside the button and add some text of white. Let's make the corners around also and add some a background of 700 here for 
the button. Let's also set the uh, breakpoints to make the width fit depending on the screen size. All right, so I'm just also adding some animation so that whenever we hover a mouse, we'll be able to see some changes on the background color. Once again, we're setting the focus so that whenever we focus our mouse or click it, we can see some changes on the borders of the button. All right, so all set. Let's just save it, and you can see that we have it in here. All right, so now that we are ready or we have our design ready for our form here, on the next lesson, we'll be adding some JavaScript functionality so that we can validate our data and we'll have it sent to our email. So we'll do that on the next lesson. Let's now make our form here functional. So we're going to be using an API here. So on your tutorial assets folder, so you can just go here, click it from our tutorial asset and click this useful link here. So we'll be using this API to make our form functional. So let me just put it here on the other tab and paste that. Press enter. You can see that we just need to create an access key for this one. So you can see that there's no sign up required here. So we'll just be putting on the email and just click on the create access key and it will be sending the access key to your email. So down here you have the codes. So all we need to do is just follow this guide here. So I'll just copy this and go here on our Visual Studio code. And I'm just going to paste that inside our form here. So in this um, action here, I'll just paste that. And then I'm going to add a method of post here. Just like, just like what we see here. All right. So the next thing we're going to be adding is we're going to be putting on the input type for our access code. So we need to specify that in here. So same as what we have here on the documentation, we can just copy this one. So I'll just copy this here. So I'll just highlight that and put it just somewhere down here. I'll just paste that. Let me just put on a comment here first. Just put in validation so that we'll know that this is the area for our validation. Let me just put in the later than sign here, just like so. And the next thing that we can do is um, add some info so that we can use whenever we send an email. So I'll just paste the access code here. All right, so uh, down here, we're going to be clicking this advanced example. And you can see that we have some other codes here that we can use. So for example, this one, if we want to add a subject, a from name, CC email reply to so on and so forth. So we can just put it down here. I'll just press enter. And uh, we're going to be adding the input type hidden and the name for our subject here. And of course, we're going to be adding the value, which is what will show when we receive this from our email. I'm going to put in, be putting a new submission from your website. So this is going to be the a subject that you'll see from your email, whether you're using a Gmail or other third-party email. So this is all of the commands that you can use for this API. All right. So once you're done, you can now set our functionalities for our form here. So um, let's um, add some JavaScript so that we can make this work now. So I'm going to be adding a, a JSON so what we're doing here is we're assigning the stringified version of the object to object to it. All right, so we have set that. And the next thing that we're going to do is um, we're going to be fetching the data from our API here. So you can see that we're going to copy this here. And then we'll put that inside our fetch function here, which is a native code inside JavaScript. So again, to summarize, what we're doing here is we're actually fetching the API and we're going to be sending a post request to this URL that we have copied from our Web3 Forms website. And with the use of the JSON string as the request body and specified headers, we'll be able to completely make the function work. So if you're actually not sure how you could implement this code, whenever i'm actually stuck to some code and i don't know what to do i actually just check on my friend at google and 
from there I'm actually able to see some answers mostly from a stack overflow or a reddit and from there I can look at some examples and use them on my project so we'll be adding the then function so what happens is after we fetch the data here we're going to be doing another function which is the then here and this line of code uses the then function method to handle the response from the fetch request asynchronously so after that we're actually using the json variable to actually assign the json parse version of the response data to it all right so let's just uh, set all the result here actually i'm just uh i think i'm just going to console log the result here so i'm just going to console.log and i'm just going to type in success here i'm gonna make that as a string here and then if if it fails or if it's not true let's just console.log the response here just like so all right so so now that we have set this let us um add some constant here of our form and let's put on document dot get element by id and we're gonna specify the form that we have created and added some id earlier and the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna specify the form here and we're gonna be adding an add event listener for this one that uh, triggers an anonymous function that takes an event object e as an argument so when we uh, submit a data this is actually triggered all right so let me just uh, set the function here all right so what's inside here is i'm going to be the form data and what this does is we're going to be creating a new instance of our form data object and it passes the form element to it which collects all the key value pairs of a data entered to this form all right so we're going to be putting e dot prevent default so that we're going to be preventing the website to load as we send on the data here and we're going to create this um, empty object so we're also be assigning the for each element here and uh, what this does is it uh, loops through the uh, form data and it sees all of the object inside of the form data all right so i'm going to be passing on the key here and we're going to set that to value and that's pretty much it so we have set all of the codes here let's um just save this so again control s or command s to save this and then let's go back to our form here so i'm just going to check that so send that and it seems to be not working let's uh, see what's wrong here all right so i'll just click here refresh that and uh, you can see uh, simple mistakes can actually uh, make your code not work pretty sure we're just missing something uh, small here let me just look at the code here we have everything right for the name for the inputs all right so i think i know what's all wrong here now so on checking everything seems to be okay here but i think let me just go back to our preview here it's actually down here i think we need to set the button to submit so because uh, we have set our form to have a, a function so we need this type to be submit we just you can see that if we miss the email you can see it's asking us to fill it out because it's we because we required it so i'm just going to put in keep putting the subject put on the message here of hello world let's send that message here all right so i think we need to change this type here for the subject i think we forgot to change that earlier so we need to if this is text all right that's that again uh, let me just check back again i think we need to change the id too so we need to change this to subject so also for the end name here so everything here needs to be matching our javascript function so you need to be careful when typing this so once you have saved that 
we can uh, now test this click on save and it's just loading you can see that we have successfully submitted that form For this module, we're going to be designing a, a simple a grid social media website for our project here. So you can see that if I go to the full screen here, and once again, we're going to be working inside play.tailwindcss.com since it's all about designing. So I'm just going to click this, go to the full screen mode. And if you'll notice, it's uh, something similar to Instagram. So we have our profile here. We have our profile picture here. And down here, we have the message settings and logout. And we can simply put on what's on our mind, just like in Facebook, and post it. So down here, you can see a sample post, let's say, from other users. You can like, share, and comment to them. So it's just a pretty simple social media website. So on the next lesson, we'll be looking at how we could start our project. So we'll be setting up our project and then start designing our social media website. Now that we've got a preview of what we're going to be designing here, it's now time to set up our project. So once again, we'll go to play.tailwindcss.com. And once again, this is the template or the default template that we'll have. So the first thing I'm going to do is just hit Control A or Command A on my keyboard and hit the Delete key. And we're going to be putting in the CDN or the third-party link that we'll be using for the icons for our social media website here so we can just go to another tab here and we can just type in fontawesome.com slash version 4 so you'll see that this is an older version of font awesome but then for the purpose of this video we'll be using this one there's actually a file already and maybe when you watch this video there would be a latest one already so for this one we're gonna go to the get started here and you can see that you can just put on your email address and they'll be sending you the link that you'll be attaching inside Tailwind Play in order for you to use their components but then I have saved it on the useful links under the tutorial assets folder so you can just simply copy that and put it inside Tailwind Play so I can just paste it there but then we need to actually link it we cannot just paste it directly on our code here or on the HTML tab here. So we need to put it inside a link. So I'll just type in link rel. Rel stands for relation equals style sheet. So we need to tell HTML that this is a style sheet. And then the type is going to be x slash CSS, just like so. And then, of course, we'll tell HTML where it will find that styling. So I'm going to cut this and paste this inside this one. And then we need to close it like this, just like so. At this point, we can now start designing our website. And then we can use the icons that we need to for this font awesome so that we can work on our designing. So on the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and start designing the first box in the grid. And we'll look at that on the next lesson. All right, so let's now start designing the first box on our grid here. So we're going to be starting on the profile bar on the left here. So I'm just going to create our main container here. So I'm going to just put on a division. And I'm just going to create a closing division, of course, just like so. And let's put on a class here. So I'm going to be putting on a flex. Let's make the width full so that it adjusts it or it adjusts depending on the screen size here. Let me just correct that. I'm going to type in a flex row here, like so, flex wrap. And going to be creating another div here and opening and closing tag and of course we'll be also preparing the styling for uh, this container or division here so I'm going to put on a height of zero width of zero set the overflow 
Y to hidden. And then I'm going to put a background of a white here. Also going to add some shadows for uh, this element here. And I'm going to hide or make the screen here or the height of the screen here to match or fit the screen of our monitor or whatever screen size you're viewing it. So I'm going to set it to, to a medium breakpoint here, just like so. All right, I'm going to be setting also the width, of course, to maybe just one fourth. All right, and on large screen, let's set the breakpoint to one fifth. All right, that should be fine. Okay, so uh, down here, I'm going to create another division. So let me just set that up opening and closing a division tag, and I'm going to be adding a class once again. So we're going to make this sticky so that whenever you scroll on your contents, that bar or that profile bar or it also serves as our main menu will always just stick to the screen all right so i'm just gonna type in the top of a zero here and let's give it a background of five right just like so and inside here i'm gonna put on a image and i'm just gonna enclose that to this let's set a class for this one be putting a rounded full so this is where we're going to be putting our profile picture so i'll set that to indigo 100 shadow of large and then outside this is where we'll be putting our image so if you remember on our last video whenever we tell html where to find that image put it inside a source attribute so let me just go to pexels.com here Again, this is a free website that you can use for your stock photos. So I'm just going to type in profile picture. And let's filter this to vertical or maybe just a square photos here. Right, so let's just get this one. I'll click on copy image address. We can right click on it and choose that. And in here, I'm going to put that inside this one. So you'll notice that we have that shadow here and, and now we've placed our profile picture inside our profile bar or menu bar all right so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add another division here i'm going to set a class here put on a margin top of five with a full order to t padding top of two let's uh, also put in the text center here and let's uh, make that text a little bit larger. Let's set the color for our text. And uh, let me just close this. Just like so. And inside this, we'll put in the name or custom name that we have for this person. All right. So you can see that we have created a division in here. And under that, we have put the name of our user here. All right. Let's add some of the menus or the functionalities that we can do inside this menu. So I'm going to create a division here, just like so. And then inside this division, let's just add some style. All right, so I'm going to put on a flex. Styling, height of screen. Let me just put on some dash here, just like so. A width of full, flex call, and let me also make it a cursor pointer whenever we hover a mouse just to add some effect on it make it look like it's a clickable link or something all right now inside this one we'll be adding our icon so i'm going to put on a anchor tag and let's um, add some class or styling for this one so set it to full wait a quarter of t two background gray once again if you need to know what this components does you can go back to tailwindcss.com and can check on the documentation 
All right, so I'm going to be putting a text of XL here on a semi bold. And let's add some color also. All right, just like so. And whenever we hover a mouse, let's also add some background color. All right, Been pretty good. Now, inside this, we're going to be adding our icon. So we'll enclose it inside an iframe. And we can do that by just putting on I. And then inside here, we're going to be putting a class here. And if we go back here to Font Awesome, we can just go to Icons here and check on All Icons. And let's say we want to add Message here. You can just press Enter. If you don't see it there, maybe we can look for Chat. Okay, nothing seems to be appearing for chat. Let's try comment here. All right, so there you go. We have comment here, and we can just use this one. So let me just click this, and you can see that if you want to use this component, you should type it this way. So we can just copy this. I'm just going to copy that. Go back here, and let's just paste that here. But let me close this anchor tag here. Just like so, and inside this anchor tag, let's put on this iframe. You can see that we have that in here now. So let's just um, add a bit of a styling for our icon here. So I'm just going to go to the class here. Let me just add float white, right? Just like so. so on PR1, PV, or padding top. Also, one. We also set the size of this one to a larger size and also change the color to 600, just like so. And inside this, I'm going to put on message. Maybe let's put it outside so that it's on the left side here. All right, just like so. At this point, we can just copy this since we have set it already. Just going to copy that three times and I'm going to change this to settings. This one I'm going to change to logout. All right, let me just correct this spelling here. And then we can just change on the style here so that we can change the look of the icon. So let me just go back here. Let's look for a, let me just go back with this back button and let me check on gear here. All right, so we have cog here. We can use that. So I can just click that. You can see that the styling for the fat cog or the font awesome cog is just type in fa-cog. So I can just go back here and change this to cog. All right, and you can see that it changes to a cog icon. Down here, what we need is a logout icon here. So let me just check. Let me just go back here and just see if we can put in sign in or log out all right here you go so we have this one let's choose the sign out here and you can see it's a fast sign out for this icon here so i can just copy that and go back here and replace this one just like so you can see that we have set up our first grid here for our social media icon so you can refine this if you want to you can add some more styles but then on our next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to be designing the remaining grid boxes for our social media website. In the last lesson, we have designed our first grid box here for our social media website. But then you can see that since the last video, I've added some refinements on our style here. So I've added some background color. Here and um, I've also added some comments. So you can see we have the sidebar here, which is this one. I also have the social media contents down here. So we'll be placing all of the contents we have on this area right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a division. So we'll have our main container for our main content. So inside this, I'm going to style it to have a breakpoint on large screen size. So I'll just set it as a 24, give it a height of full, same as the weight here. I'm also going to add some overflow here for the x-axis. So I'm going to set that to 
let's say let's set that to scroll here just like so and we're gonna also add some padding here of five and let's set the break point for mid screen here or a middle screen here so i'm just gonna say that's a three fourths and also add some paddings or medium screen sizes also give it a width of let me just correct this set lg to at least four fifths for large screen sizes so you can see that our first grid here is now aligned to the left here after setting this proper widths on different screen sizes now that we've set that up i'm going to be adding another container here I'm going to set a width of full here a rounded radius corner for this container I'm going to set the background to white give it a padding of five and also add some shadow here okay so now you'll see that we have our first content this is where we will place our post what's on your mind section here so let me just close it on a closing division tag here and then inside this container i'm going to be adding the text area so i'll just add a class here and give it a float of let me just correct this float of left all right and i'm gonna also be adding a, a rounded corner for this one set the border and also the color to it's at least 200 here also gonna give it a padding of two and add some shadows all right so that's set now let's add some rows here let's make it at least five and let's add some placeholder for this one i'm going to be putting speak your mind and i'll just close this to uh give it a closing tag also so you can see it now here so let me just check our codes here, see if we have missed anything. So everything seems to be fine. All right, so maybe instead of putting this uh, to float on the left side, I think I'm just gonna make it have a width of pool. All right, that's looking pretty good. So we have it here. Now I'll be skipping the uh, buttons here. So we should be able to choose if we want it public or like private and then we can have a submit button in here but then for that we'll be using grid classes and i will go in greater detail about grid classes on the next lesson so for now we'll be uh, skipping at uh, that part and i'm um, going to be creating the contents for our social media here so we have the images and we have the buttons to like share and comment so on and so forth so we'll just uh, maybe just go down here if there's a space here i'm going to create a division here and I'm going to create a closing div for this one. I'm going to add a class and give it a margin top of, let me just set that to MT3, margin top. We're not going to be using the Y axis here. So I'm going to be placing a flex and a flex column. Now inside this division, I'm going to add another container or division here. I'm going to set this to have a margin top of three and also give it a background color of white all right just like so let's um put a closing division tag here now under this division we'll be placing the image for our content so i'm going to create an image tag here I'm gonna give it a class of rounded up large give it a border shadow of large and i'm also going to be adding the source for this image here so we're going to tell html where to get the image for this one so now we can just uh, go to either pexels.com or another website that you can check on is the unsplash.com so let me just go here on the other Tab here you can see we have unsplash here and from here you can also check on and type on the type of photo that you want in this case i want nature here and i think i'll just choose this one right click on that click on copy image address and then i'll just paste that in here All right. you can see that's uh, it's placed in there and you can see that the top here has a, a round corner so now that is placed in there what we'll do next 
is I'm going to be creating the, like, the description for this photo. So down here, I'm going to create another division. I'm going to give it a new class, add a border styling here, set the background to white, give it a padding of 5, and then I'm also going to be making the text extra large, give it a font weight of semi-bold, adds of color, of course, and let's give it a dark gray color here and also add some shadow okay so let's just add our closing tab and let's just put in the same text that we have on the project preview here so i'll just put in pretty cool photo from the mountains and let's uh, put on the person who actually took this photo so whenever you get footage or stock videos from other websites it is nice to give credits to the one who actually took it so here i'm just gonna type in image credit to david marco all right let's just put at david marco in there so you're assuming that this is a social media that you can tag people so after that, I'm going to be placing our uh, buttons down here. So I'll just um, create another division here, which will hold our contents for the uh, like, share, and comment button. So I'm going to add some styling for this one. Well, let me just add a flex here, flex row, give it a flex wrap attribute. Also add some borders, give it a color white, and add some adding in shadow here just like so now in here we're going to be adding our other div i'm just going to be giving it a class here of one third for the width give it a text center so inside this instead of using a paragraph here we'll be using this division to place our text here so it doesn't mean that you're using text or gonna be putting text that you'll be using only paragraph it depends upon what you want to achieve all right so just put in the closing tag here and just put on a like all right so we have that here and i think i also want to add some hovering effects to this one so whenever we hover our mouse the background color changes so me giving it a gray color of let's just say 200 all right just like that at this point i can just copy this i'm going to copy that two more times change this to share and this one to comment i think i want to add some division for this buttons here so i'm going to add a border left of four all right, I'm also going to copy this and also place it down here. All right, just like so. Looking pretty good. All right, so let me just correct this. I think I'm going to be placing this container just below here. And then I'm going to be creating another division underneath this contents here. So I'm going to create the division, create a closing tag for that one. I'm going to add some class and give it a flex, flex row and flex wrap. Let's um, center out the content here. Also add some rounded corners at the bottom here. And again, depending on how large you want the uh, radius, we'll be setting on if it's large, medium, or small. And if you want to see the component, and tailwind you can go back to the website tailwindcss.com and from there you can look at the documentation to see what each component does and again as you do this you'll be pretty much be familiar with each component and you would actually be able to memorize them as you do this all right so i'm going to be putting on a padding of five next up i think i'm also going to be adding some text sizing involved extra large add some font weight here or just a semi bold and also add the color let's up uh, make this 700 here and finally 
some shadow. All right. So now that that, that is placed, let's um, just add here. I'm going to be adding another division here. I'll just place this down here. I'll create a opening and closing div. And what I'm going to put here is a width of full, just like so. And inside this division that we're going to make again is our content. So I'm going to put on a class of full here, text to left. Text is going to be, let me just correct this, text to extra large. And also add some color here. Let's just make this at least 600 here. I'm going to be placing at some person to make it look like we're tagging someone. And back here on our generator, so let's just copy and highlight this and just place it down here, just like so. At this point, I can just find out this whole container here. So I'm just going to click here and you can see that it highlighted this closing division here. So we'll just copy this. Well, let's highlight that control here command C and then paste that two more times here. All right. So you can see now we have some other contents. So you can just change on the image, change on the contents, and then you can use this as a good starting point when you're creating your simple social media website. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about grid classes. So we're going to be going back to this section here, and we're going to add our other buttons or action for this section. So in here on our code, we're just going to go here on the text area. And down here, I'm just going to create a division first. So I'll just create a closing tag here. And then I'm going to add a class for this one. So I'm going to put margin top of three, a width of full. And in here, we're going to be placing our grid classes. Now, before I put it here, so let me just place that here. Let's just go to tailwindcss.com here. And then you can just go to the quick search. Again, Control-K or Command-K is the keyboard shortcut. And then you can see that my recent search is a grid template row. So I can just click that. And you'll notice that we have different component for the grids that we can use. So right now, this is the row. So if you were going to be putting the content like this, like one, two, three, four, and actually in rows, you'll be using the grid template rows. But then let's just look at the grid template columns. So we're going to be placing our content like this. So you'll notice that depending on how many columns you want to use, you'll be putting on the number that you want in here. In our case, we just want first to specify that we're going to be using this content as a grid. And then we'll specify how many columns we want for this grid here. So I'll be placing that to grid. Let me just put this here, calls or columns too. And then inside this division or column or grid columns, we'll be placing our content. So I'm going to be creating another div here. So that's our opening and closing tag div. And you can see that if we want to set the placing of this grid, we can just go here to the grid column start and end. And you'll notice you can manipulate the grids inside the grid itself. So you can make it longer or shorter than the others. You can also place it like this if you want the other one to start at the beginning or on the left or the other one goes to the right. You can do that. So let's just do that here. So I'm going to be putting on a class here. So let's just put that call start one and call and one, just like so. Inside this, I'm going to be, be putting on a select HTML tag here. And what a select does is to create a drop down for you. So I'm going to be placing that to left, give it a width of full, add a round corner on it, and also put the color to gray and also add some shadow here. Just like so. So you can see that we have a drop on here, but it doesn't have any infos yet. So down here, I'm going to just be closing this. So I'm going to be putting a closing tag for our select. Inside of this uh, select tag here, we're going to be putting the options for this drop down. So to do that, you'll just have to specify the option HTML tag here, and we're going to be closing it. 
to this one and just paste the options I'll put in public and just copy that and in here that type private all right so if we click this we see that we have a public and private option for this drop down now under the, this division I'm going to create another division for the button so I'm going to be posting this just like so and then let's add a class here and uh, this one will have a call and of five whole span of one and then this is going to be a button for this one so just place a button make this type button let's give it a class make it float to right give it a rounded border here set the background to indigo say 400 also set the paddings give it a text of white and whenever we hover our mouse you want to have a different background here so i'll set the color here to something lighter all right so now that this set i'll just close this button here just like so and then inside that button i'm going to be placing the word submit all right so whenever we hover our mouse you can see that it's changing its color so if you want to check out the whole documentation for the grid classes, you can go back to this documentation here on tailwindcss.com. And there are a lot of components that you can use. So depending on what you want to achieve, you can use grid auto flow, grid auto columns, you can even set the gap for each column here. So uh, just uh, check on the documentation and just remember, whenever you are stuck with something, always check the documentation because documentation will really help you out on your coding journey. In this module, we're gonna be designing a web portfolio app using Tailwind CSS and JavaScript. So I'll show you this uh, preview here of our uh, finished website. So you can see we have our header here. We'll be designing our navigation here at the top. After that, we'll be also putting our main content, and you'll notice the a background image here has a parallax effect. So we'll know how to do that on the next video. Aside from that, we'll also look at how we could create our other sections. So we can see we have the education, the skills, and the project section. We'll also be creating the footer again. And aside from that, we'll also be making this content here responsive to different screen sizes. So if I press on Control Shift or Command Shift M to uh, go to our responsive design mode you can see that this is responsive to different screen sizes and we'll be doing all this on a visual studio here so that we'll be able to properly implement javascript so you can see that we'll also set this one up on the next video so without further ado uh, let's go ahead and start our our first lesson So for this lesson, we're going to be setting up our project and start designing our website. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new folder here. So once we have that folder in there, we can now just um, put it in here and just click and drag that to our Visual Studio icon here. So that will open up the folder inside the application here. Let me just enlarge that. And what I'm going to do next is I'm also going to be enlarging the size of this interface so that we can properly see it but then let me just go to the terminal here first so this is the new terminal here control shift or command shift tilde is the keyboard shortcut so i'll just click that and under the view here i'm gonna go to let me just check here appearance and zoom in on this one all right just like so let me just do that one more time appearance then go to zoom in the interface all right, so we can now easily view this even if you're watching on your normal screen. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'll make sure that I'm using Git Bash. So I'll just go here, and I'm going to type npm initialize or init. And then I'll specify why so that we don't have to go through all of that settings of setting up the name, version, and so on and so forth. Now under here, you can see that we have set this one up. So once we have that set up, what we'll be doing next is to install the uh, Tailwind component. So 
we can uh, go ahead and uh, do that by going to the Tailwind components here. So I'll just type in npm install dash d Tailwind CSS. And this will install the Tailwind components inside our application. So if you want to see how we do this and uh, how to find the resources, you can go back to the previous lessons that we have on how to get started with Tailwind CSS in Visual Studio. And from there, we have explained everything in greater detail. All right, so now that we have the components that we need here, the next thing that we're going to do is we'll be typing npx Tailwind CSS in it. So what this does is to create the necessary files and folder inside our application here. And I'm going to create new folders here. So I'm going to create one for our distribution and another folder for our source here. All right. So now that we have a set that up under our tailwind.config.js, I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to specify where we will get the resources for our code here. So I'm going to type in this. And that's because we have this one. And this is where we'll be putting our index.js and our HTML file here. So once we have specified that, I'm going to put in this asterisk and put on a period. And in here, I'm just going to type in HTML and a JS, just like so. All right, so now that we have a set that up, can I just go here? And I'm going to create a file here. I'm going to put in index.html. Also put in index.js. And then. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an input CSS file here where we will be putting the directives for our Tailwind CSS. So I'm just going to click this again, and I'm going to type in input.css. And here I'm going to specify the directives that we need. I'm Tailwind base at Tailwind components. And last one will be Tailwind utilities. Just like so. Now save that, Control S or Command S to save it. And down here, we're going to be um, executing a command again. So I'll just type in npx tailwind css dash i dot source slash source input dot css slash o dot this output. Now, if we Check on our disk here. We should be able to have output CSS later on. So I'll just type that in here, CSS double dash watch. So once I enter this, it will be creating all of the components for our CSS here. So let me just see if that's right here. So npx tailwind CSS, so it should be dash i here. I'm just correct that. Just use my keyboard to correct that one. We have dot source input dot css dash o dot slash dist output css double dash watch. Right, so just make sure you're putting in the right commands in here. So I'll just press enter now. And it should be able to install all of the Tailwind components. So you can see that we have output CSS right now. Now we can test this. So I'm going to go to index.html and I'm going to type in HTML. I'll click this. So we have our a basic HTML structure. I'm going to be putting on a, let me just undo that here. And uh, first type in my portfolio. And let's test that out. I'm going to be putting a heading here of hello. I'll save that. And of course, we need to specify the styling or where we'll be getting that styling. So I'm going to click on this link here. And the reference would be our output.css file. And then we can now add some styling. So I'm going to put class, and I'm going to make it a little bit larger here, make it to Excel, and give it a text color of red. Or let's uh, specify gray here. I think I'm going to go with red here. So let's do that. Press Control S or Command S to save that. And then I'm going to open it with Live Server. And if you want to know how to install this, you can once again go back to our getting started lesson. So I'm just I'm going to wait for it to open. 
And you can see that it applied those changes. We have a, a larger font here and has that color that we have specified. So we have successfully installed our Tailwind CSS. Now, just to test our index.html here, or index.js, I'm going to alert here, just like so. And of course, we need to specify where we'll be getting those JavaScript files. I'm going to click on source. And inside, we'll be specifying index.js here. So once I save this, we should be able to get an alert on our preview page here. So let me just go back here, click on our preview page. Let me just refresh this. All right, so we're not getting that. Let me just go back to our code here. I'll press save on this one. I'll press save on this one. And then let me just check index.js. Yeah, that should be right. And let me just go back to our code here. Let me just go back to our preview. So now we have that alert in here. So we have successfully installed Tailwind CSS and JavaScript on our machine. So on our next lesson, we'll be looking at how we could start a designing our navigation section for our web portfolio. Now that we have set up our workspace here, we can now start designing our navigation section for our web portfolio. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just I'm going to be canceling this out. So I'll close this so that we have more space. We have Node running already. I'm going to press down Control B or Command B on my keyboard to also hide the panel here so that we have more space here. And then I'm just going to delete this heading here. So if we are a running node, every time we save the file, so I'll just hit Control S or Command S, you'll notice that it also updates here on our preview window. All right, now that we have that set up in here, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be creating our navigation section. So first, I'll be putting on our comment here so that we'll know what each section does. So we'll navigation here. And then underneath that, I'm going to be placing our nav HTML tag here. Now that we have that in place, I'm going to be adding a class on this a navigation. Here. So I'll just put in class. So we're not going to be using nav bar here. So that's just the auto suggest here. I'm going to be putting a background of gray, and let's just give it 100 for this one. And underneath that, or inside that, we'll be creating some uh, divisions so that we can easily manipulate each section here or con contents. So I'm going to be adding an auto margin. So we can just put on class here. All right, so I'm going to put on a margin on the x axis. I'm going to place that as auto, set the max width to a 7xl here set a padding for the x-axis and i'm going to be creating another div inside of this division just like so underneath this i'm going to be adding a class again we'll set this to relative put on a flex here and i'm going to be setting the height for this one to 16. so that's a 4 rem or 64 pixel and then I'm going to be also putting some items center here and justify this to between, just like so. So that we can see the rest of the text here, I'm going to go here, our menu, go under view, and just use the word wrap. Alt Z or Option Z is the keyboard shortcut. Now that we have placed that, we can now set our navigation section here. So I'm just going to create one more division here. So I'll just place that div here. And I'll just put that down here. I'm going to put on a class for this one. And I'm going to make this flex again, from flex one, maybe, and center the items. And let's also justify it to center here. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to add the container for our anchor tags here. So once again, inside this division, we'll create one last division here. For this one, I'm going to add a class of flex. Let's uh, give it a space on the x-axis. Let's hit that to 4. And then inside this is our anchor tags for our menu. So I'm going to create closing and or an opening and closing tag here 
and let's just set the href to hashtag so we don't have any links yet so let's just put on a placeholder i'm going to add a class on this one put on a background of gray maybe 200 set the text to black also add some paddings on the x-axis and y-axis and also create a, a rounded a radius for the selection here so i'm going to be adding or making the text a little bit smaller than usual add an intensity on that one of medium and then in here i'm gonna name it home now i'll just press save here control s or command s and we should be able to see our navigation here so we have our main navigation here the container and we have now our home navigation a button here at this point i can just copy this just uh, do that a few more times and then what i'm going to do next is i'm going to be changing uh, this one to education this one i'm going to set to skills this one i'm going to set to projects just like so now i want to give it some spacing so this one is space and has an four for the spacing here I wonder why it's not working at the moment let me just check this all right so we might have put it on the wrong spot so we need to only copy the anchor tags on this one so let me just press ctrl z or command z on this one and just copy this anchor tag and do that three more times let's put on some space so that we can easily see this the education again put on skills here and i'll put on projects in yep that's looking better and what i want to do also is just add some animation hover animation when we hover our mouse to each of these buttons here so i'm going to be putting hover I'm going to be adding a text of a white. And then I'll also add another hover. And let's change the background color to a, a darker gray whenever we hover a mouse here. I'm going to be copying this. And I'll paste that to the rest of the other buttons here. Just like so. So when we hover our mouse now, we should be able to see those hovering effects here. Just like so. All right, so now we have created our navigation section. For our next lesson, we're gonna be setting up our header inside our program here. It is now time to start designing our header here. So I'm just gonna be placing it here and it doesn't matter where you place it on your code here. Header contains a relevant information about your website. For example, in this case, since we're creating a actual web portfolio, we can put some information like my name and what I do or the position that I am working for. And I can just put that inside the header. So I'm just going to be creating a div for that header here. I'm going to be putting a class for that header. So I'm going to be putting it inside a container. And I'm going to set the margin for the x-axis to auto. Set some flex also to pull. And let's center out the items inside this container. Let's also put some paddings for this one, just like so. And inside this division, I'm going to be placing the header. Right, so we have a close on the opening and closing tag. And for this header, I'm going to put a class here. So just set that to a width of 11, 12 here. And let's also justify center this one. I'm also going to be making sure that its items are centered out, just like so. Let's also put a flex column in here, the margin bottom of five. And that should be it. So inside this header, I'm going to be placing an H1 tag here, a heading one tag. And this class will have a styling a little bit bigger than usual. So let's put two extra large here. And then I'm going to be adding a text center for this one. I'm also going to set the color to gray 100. Let's give it a font of black here. 
So it could be like a, a bold font. And I'm also going to be adding the leading property here. And let's set that to a 7. So inside this, I'm going to be putting hi, I'm James. Just like so. So you can see that we have that thing here. Maybe let's set this to a darker gray here. Yeah, just like so. And let's add a, a different variation of color for the name James here. So I'm going to be putting that inside a span. Just like so. Let me just cut this, paste that in here. And for our span, let's just give it a color here. So I'm going to be putting X blue, set that to 400. Just like so. Next thing that we'll do is I'm going to be putting on a paragraph here. I'm going to set that to have a margin top of 5. Let's set it to a darker gray color. Let's also just use 700 in here. Let's center out this text too and text to a, a little bit smaller here. And let's set the font to semi bold, just like so. And let's just close this one out. And inside this one, I'm going to be putting a web dev and a graphic designer. Let's save that. And now we can see it in here. Right. So now we have a setup our header in here. What we can also do is that we can add another div division inside this one. So we can add a button. So I'm just going to create a, a div here, just like so. And inside of this division, I'm going to be also adding a class. I'll put it to. We just undo that. That's a lot of styling in there. We don't want that. We just want a flex justify center in here. Items should be centered out. And we're going to be adding a button inside this container. So I'll set the button to have a class here of focus outline. So well, again, focus does a, a focus behavior. So when we focus our mouse to this element, it will show this uh, whatever we set on the focus here. So for example, if we set the focus the ring to have a weight of 2, whenever we focus our mouse in here, it will show that property. So I'm going to be setting this to ring offset. And let's set that's two, focus ring, set that to blue. Um, let me just let me just set it to 700 here. Let's have it a background of blue, 700. And then we'll also give it a nice hover effect, uh, background blue, 600. And I think let's also add some colors to our border here. So I'll just put in border indigo 700, and that should be it. So I'm going to be putting learn more on this one. Let's save that. So now we have this button right here. And let's just give it some spacing here. I'm going to be putting a margin top of 5. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's um, also add some paddings of 4. All right. And I think I'm going to set the text to color white to here. Let me just remove this. Why do we have a scroll here? I don't know why it's there. I'm going to set the text to add a too much padding here. So let's just set it to 4. I'm going to set the text to white. All right, pretty good. Let's add a rounded radius for this one. All right. Pretty good. Let's make that uh, full. No, let's not make it full. Maybe just two XL. And maybe just medium. Yeah, still looking pretty nice. Now you can see we have that effect in there. So now we have set up our header in here. On our next lesson, we'll be creating our main section. And on that main section, we'll be adding a background here and we'll add a parallax effect. So we'll look at that on the next lesson. So in the last lesson, we have successfully designed our header on our web portfolio here.
for this lesson, we're going to focus on creating our main section. And I think I want to put the header inside our main section and then put on a background image and then also add a parallax effect. So let me demonstrate how to do this. So first, we're going to be creating a comment here. So I'm going to be typing a comment so that we'll know that this is our main section, just like so. And then I'm going to be creating the main tag here. So I'm going to be putting the header inside this main tag. So I'll just cut that and place that down here, just like so. All right, so on this main container, I'm going to be adding a class. It's not certainly a section. So inside this main here, I'm going to be adding the background property for our image. So I'm going to type in bg dash. I'm going to enclose that to a URL here. And then we're going to be adding a parenthesis. Inside this parenthesis, we're going to be adding the link for our image. Now, for the previous video, we've always been working on links here from our other website like Pextels or Unsplash. I'm going to teach you how you can use your local images and put it inside or use it inside your projects. So what I'm going to do is just click on source here. And we're going to be creating a new folder. So it's important to organize your assets so that you'll be able to easily identify each elements. So I'm going to be putting IMG or image for short. So inside this image, we'll be placing our image. Now under your tutorial assets folder, so let me just open this, you'll have your image file. So I'm just going to go back to our tutorial assets here. And then inside the web portfolio, we have under source, the image that we'll be using. So I'm just going to copy this. You can use other image. You can download it from pexels.com or unsplash.com. But this one I have also done some edits in Photoshop. So I gave it like a dark overlay so that we can easily see our text here. So I'm just going to copy that. And then I'm going to go back to our new folder. So I'm just going to click this new folder, go to source. And this is the image folder that we have just added. And I'm just going to paste that in there. Now that we have that in there, what we're going to do is specify the path of that image. So I'm going to go back here to our index.html. And inside this parenthesis here, I'm going to specify that. So I'm going to put on two dots because we are like two directories away from it. And then I'm going to be typing source, this, this one. And I'm going to put on forward slash. I'm going to go inside the IMG folder. And I'm going to put slash again. And in here, I'll be typing in the file name of our image. So it's PNG. And then let me just save this, Control S or Command S. And now we can see our image here, but it's not looking good. So we need to add some more styling so that we can see this clearly on our page here. So in here, I'm going to be specifying the screen or the height of our, our image here. So we'll put on screen on this one so that it actually adjusts to the screen size. I'm going to hit on save, and you can see that we have that adjusted now. You also want to fit it inside our screen here. So I'm going to be adding a BG cover. Make sure that the image is not repeating. Just like so. I'm going to also put on a parallax effect here. But before we do that, I'll just save this so we can see this. And you can see that it's looking nice. Right now, you can see that as I scroll, the image follows. But if I add on a background fix here and save it. If I scroll, you can see that the image on the background stays still and it's giving us a parallax effect. So it's actually looking really good. Now let me just refine this. We can't see the text here. So I'm going to be changing it to a lighter text. Save that. And that's looking good. So we have set up our main section here and we've added the header inside of that main section. So we have added an image. And again, you can use any image on this one. And if you want to see some other commands on how you can put on the image inside your HTML, you can always check on Google. This is just one way of adding it using the Tailwind components. Now, on our next lesson, we're going to be looking at how we could design our footer for our web portfolio.
So now we've finished adding our main section here. And before we add other sections, let's also work on our footer first. So in here, I'm just going to hide this panel here, Control-V or Command-V to do that. And under our main section here, we're going to be creating our footer. So I'm going to be creating a comment here, output footer section. So now we know what, what this section does. So it's for our footer. And down here, I'm going to be placing our footer content. So just going to type in a footer here. And inside this footer, let's um, add some class. So we're not going to be putting footer instead. I'll put on a gray color for our footer here. And also, I'm going to be adding a padding of 4 for the x-axis and 12 for the y-axis, just like so. So let's just uh, go down here. And I'm going to be adding another division here. So for this division, let me just put it down here. I'm going to add a class. And I'm going to give it a flex property. Let me just put that inside our class here. Let's also put a flex column. Let's also center out the items that we'll be putting inside and also make sure that they are justified to center. So let me just click that in here, just like so. So aside from that, I'm going to be creating another div here. But then we're not going to be putting any class in here. We're just setting this a division so that we can divide each contents because we have set flex column in here. Every division that we use as a separator will be properly aligned inside this container. So once again, we can uh, use the Ionic icon here to put on some icons for our footer here. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to type in Ionic icon. And I'll just click this first link here. And then once again, let us go to a usage because we need to import the components here. So we'll use this link. And then I'll go up here on our header and just put the script here for our Ionic icon components. At this point, we can now use the icons for Ionic icons and use it inside our project here. So I'm going to type in info. Here and when I use this icon here, I'll just click that, then go back to our preview page here so that we can see that. And then I'm just gonna add it inside of this div here. All right. Aside from that, I think I'm gonna add some class on this one. So I'll just set that in here. Let me just save that first so that we can see what it looks like. So I'll just go down here. You can see that we have that in here. And let's make that bigger. So I'm going to be putting a text of 3XL. Let's also make sure that it's centered out. And I'm also going to be adding a text of center just to make sure. All right. So that's looking pretty good in there. Now let me just add another division here. So I'm just going to go down here and add another division. For this one, I'm going to be adding a flex property. And let's uh, wrap that flex also. I'm going to be also make sure that it's uh, centered for the items and also give it a justified center property here. I'll also be adding some uh, margin at the top here. So it should be fine. All right. Yeah, let me just put that inside here. You notice that since we have added that outside class here, it actually read it as a type inside our preview here or our code here. Save that. And inside of this division, I'm going to be adding the menu items or buttons that we have at the top of our navigation here. It's actually common to do that on most of the website to add the menus at the top and also at the footer just for more information or so that the users or visitors can easily navigate throughout the website. So I'm just going to be placing that down here. And I'm going to put a anchor tag for this one. So let's also put a href. And let's set this to a JavaScript void 0 here. So I'll just set that set to void 0, just like so. And let's add a class here. I'm going to be putting a hover effect. 
for this one. So let's make the text to color gray as we hover. Set the text to base. And let's also set the cursor to pointer. Also want to add some leading on this one. And let's set the text color to a darker gray, just like so. And once again, I think that's pretty good already. So I'm going to be adding the text here, put in home. So we have that in here. So whenever I hover my mouse, you can see that it's turning into a lighter gray here. And also the cursor turns into a pointer. At this point, we can just copy this three more times here. So I'll just press enter here, paste that, do that again. And I'll just change this to education. And I'll change this to skills. And I'll change this to projects. It's like so. Now we have it in here. Now it seems that they're actually too close on each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'll just add a gap here. So just type in gap 8. All right. So just added some gap on top of our content here. So or between this icon here. So what I'm going to do is I'll actually place it here because this one is actually for both of these contents here. That's why it's adding gap in between of whatever inside this division here. So I should be placing the gap here. So I'll just put it somewhere around here. So I'll be placing gap here. And now we have evenly distributed those gaps on the content of this container or division here, which is this one. So we only have the menu here. So that's looking pretty nice here on our preview window. All right, so after setting that up, I'm going to be creating another division here. I'll press on div and then put this down here. And I'm going to add some class for this one. So I added the auto suggest again, which we don't like. And it's actually kind of annoying already. So I'm going to be putting flex here. And I'll make that center, put on a gap here already so that we don't have to set it up later on. And if you are actually thinking how I'm able to determine the number that I'll be putting in, it's just that I have a, gone through this so many times that I know what each number does. And I can just do it on my head here. And you'll pretty much be getting on this level as you do this. So I'm going to be adding a button here. And I'm going to set a class. So for this one, I'm going to make sure that this button has a rounded pool. All right. So we'll close this one out. And then inside this, we're going to be adding our social media icons here. So you can go back to the tutorial assets folder in here, and we have the SVGs and image links that we have on our previous lesson. So you can just open that. And I think I'm going to use, let me just scroll down here, this uh, Facebook logo here. So once again, we can just highlight this. And if you want to know how we could download the SVGs, you can uh, just watch our previous video when we look at how we could easily download this SVG links and put it on our project. So once again, SVG links or SVG links are pretty manageable. That's why I love to use it because you can easily set the color if you want to set on the size and also add some other data for JavaScript. Well, let me just save this. Let's see how it looks like. So we have it in here. Now I'm going to add that circle round outline on the social media icon here. So I'm going to go back here. And I think I'm going to set the focus. I'll put a focus ring here of two, focus ring offset of two, put a focus ring, just like so. And let's set the focus ring color to a darker gray here. Finally, let's also set the focus outline to none. Let me just save that. Let's look at that again. So we have it in here. If you click that, you can see that we have that 
outline whenever we click it. So I wanted to do that. And the next thing that I want to do is to add some other social media icon in here. So we can just simply copy this. So let me just go here and I'll just copy this one here, this button. Just like so. And then since we have a made of this template, you can use it to add the other elements. If we're just using the same styling like the social media icon. So for this one, I'm just going to go back to our links here. I'm going to be, let's say, using Twitter for this one. Just copy this and then just replace this just like so. And let me just use Google here and just copy this and just replace this SVG here and save that. Let us look at what it looks like. All right, so that's looking pretty good in here. So once we have a set those, what I'm going to do next is just um, add our final text down here. So you can just go outside of that division already and create another division in here. And let me just press enter in that one. And I'm going to just add some class here. I'm going to put on flex and make sure the items on this division is centered out. And also put a margin top for this one. I'm going to be adding a paragraph. Set that paragraph to have a not text muted, but base. Also be adding some letting in there for set the text color to a darker gray here. And inside this paragraph, I'm going to be adding, say, 2023 and be adding a span here. Just like so. And on this span here, I'm going to be adding some styling. So it's just um, a matter of adding a styling inside the paragraph, like for a certain word inside the paragraph here. So I'm going to be setting this one to semi bold. And what's inside there is the uh, My Portfolio, for example. Just like so. And then let me just see what it looks like. So that's looking pretty good. Normally, what you would put here is your a website link. But then just uh, for this lesson, I'm going to be putting a custom text. So once that's set, I'm going to be creating another division. So let me just add some class here. I'm going to put a border on the left here and set that to color gray here. Let's set that to 800 on a padding on the left. Also set the margin left here. And inside this one, I'm going to be adding another text here. So for this one, we'll have set the text base being four text to gray 800 also. And inside this paragraph here, I'm going to be putting the ink or incorporation all rights reserved. Just like what we see on other websites. Let me save that. And let's look at down here. So now we have uh, this division here, which is this border here on the left. And you can see that if you look on some other website, you'll pretty much be seeing similar uh, footer stylings. So it's up to you how you would like to start style your footer. So in this lesson, we've actually learned how we could uh, style our footer using some SVGs and using the Tailwind components. And uh, just practice. Keep on playing with Tailwind components, and you'll be able to get your own unique style. And for our next lesson, we'll be adding some more section for our page here. At this point, with the navigation here and the main section, header section, and footer, our website is starting to go somewhere, but then it's not yet that appealing. So in this lesson, let's focus on adding more section to our web portfolio website here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create another section. So I'm just going to go up here to our footer. Let me just check on the starting tab for our footer here. And then down here, I'm going to be adding our education section that we have saw 
on our project preview for this module. So I'm going to be creating a comment and add this as education section. And then I'm going to be placing some divisions to actually work in our section here. So I'm going to be put in section here. And let me just put this down here. Inside this section, I'm going to be adding a class. I'm going to be setting the margin of the x axis to auto set this as a container and also put in a ffp attribute in here if you want to know what that is you can actually just press the space bar or you can actually just look on the documentation on tailwindcss.com so we can now add some paddings in here also i think we need to add some Padding for the y axis. So let's um, set that in there. Maybe adding a heading. I'm going to give that heading a class here. And for this heading, I'm going to make that larger than usual. So let me just correct this text slash for Excel. I'm going to give it a font black here. And also set the lead into 10 or 40 pixels. Let's also center this heading here. And I'm going to change the color to a darker gray here. All right. So let me just close this and put on education in here. Let's save that and let's see what that looks like. All right. So we're pretty much emphasizing this section so that the users will know that from this main section, if we scroll down, we have another new section, which is the education section. All right, so emphasizing important elements inside the website is important when you're creating a website. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating another division here. Set that, and then I'm going to add a class in here. Set that to F. Let me just correct this. Dash B. And... Aside from that one, I'm going to be creating another div inside this division. So that is set. I'm going to set this to justify center and with a width of full. All right, just like so. And then let's uh, create another division here. So for this division, I'm going to be adding a class here. I'm going to put on a flex attribute here, flex column, item center. And I'm also going to be adding some border of gray, 300 here. Set the position of this division to relative. And inside this division, we'll be adding some icons for our education section. So I'm going to go back to the Ionic icons here. And let me just delete this. I want to look at something that that's uh, looking like it's pertaining to education here. So just looking if we have that graduation happening. I'm just going to scroll down here. And I think I saw it somewhere around this area here. So let me just... Let me just find it. I'm just going to type in school. All right, so we have it here. So I'm going to be clicking this, copy that, and I'm going to paste that in here. So let's uh, see what it looks like in there. So it's pretty small in that area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some styling on it. So I'll just put on some class, give it a text of A like so, just like so. So uh, let's see that again, and yep, it's looking pretty good. So let me just add some margin top in here. I'll uh, we'll just put in five, all right? So we have some space. And underneath this icon, I'm going to be adding another division where we'll be adding our information. So I'm going to be adding a class inside this division. So I'm going to be adding flex here. Be setting the margin top to 12. Set a flex column. Items should be centered out. And in here, I'm going to put on 
our heading. So let me put H1 in here. Set the class to text extra large. Give it a font intensity of bold and a letting of a five. So I'm going to type here my school, for example. Um, let's say March to July 2020. It's just actually a random month here. So, you know, when you're looking at your CVs or other people's CV, you have this school and then the month and the month and to where they graduate. So I'm just using that information in here. So let me just add another heading here, which is an H2. I'm going to be putting a class here. I'll set this to text gray 500. I'm also going to be adding some margin and padding on this one. Let's make sure that the text is centered. I'm also going to be adding a text base property and letting to this one. And let's set the tracking to wide here. All right, so inside this, I'm going to go to our Lauren Lipsum generator. So that we can just add some placeholder on this one. So let's just wait for that to load. And once the generator loads, we're just going to be copying some text down here. So let me just click this and just highlight up to this area only. And let's just copy that inside this heading. All right. So let's um, just save this and see what that looks like. All right. So that's looking pretty good in here. Now, the next thing I want to do is um, add a different kind of styling in here. So before we do that, I'm going to create another a division for this one. So I'll just put it maybe down here. And so I'm going to create another division here. And I'm going to set this class to have a flex property, flex column, which the items are centered. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And let's just uh, put on another division here. So I'm going to place another division here. And then I'm going to set this division to have a class of also a flex property. Margin top should be six. Let's also put a flex column. Make sure the items on this one are centered. And once again, inside of this division, we're going to be adding our contents for this text here. So let me just. Let me just copy this content here anyway. So we'll just use this and then put it down here, just like so. All right, so that's looking pretty good in there. So let me just look at if we have the right one in here. Now, below this text here or this division, I'm going to be putting another icon in here. So let me just put in rocket here. So let's copy this one and I'm just going to put it down here. And just add some class. Maybe make it, or I'm going to make it a little bit larger, actually exponentially or exponentially larger here. So I'll also be adding some padding. So five. And let's see what that looks like here. All right. Looking pretty good. So. Let me just check on if it's actually matching our style here. So we have a light navigation bar. We have this a white education section and our touch of gray footer. So that's looking pretty nice in here. It works well together with our education section. All right, so now we're done with our education section here. And again, since we're working with Tailwind components, we can also easily look for like components on the internet. So if you want, let's say, a complete section already, you can actually check for templates. So a one website that you can look on is the tailwindui.com. So let me just 
type that here. I'll just type in have the tailwind. Just search it here, tailwind uikit.com. And you can just click this here. So you can see that there are a lot of templates that you can use in here. So if we go to templates and see that they have paid templates and they also have a free templates that you can use. So if you click on components and see that we have master layouts, layout card, grid, grid card, and some horizontal navigation headers that you can use here. But then let me just show you a one example here. So I have this template here under the page section so we need to adjust login first so i'll just use my google account here so let me just pause the video and adjust login for a few seconds here so this is what it's going to look like when you're logged in inside tailwind ui kit so I'm, I'm working on the light mode right now contradictory to what you have seen earlier so in here you can simply just click on any layouts here and you'll be able to see some examples so in here you can see that we have this example for our sidebar layout and let me just go back here i'll just press back here and then once again i'll be pasting the links that i have earlier so it's under the page section here so let me just go back and let's just try to look up the page section here so i'm going to be looking at the marketing section so let me just check the tables here we have the ui elements we have avatar we have badge we have wraps so let's go under the listing section so let me just find the listing section here so we have the page section all right so under the page section we can just go down here to the featured layouts and let me just see what we can use so we can use any of this design here so let's just look at what's best here i think i'm gonna use this one instead so we can just click this and it will show us the html code so you can use it in react or in view or whatever type of language or application you want it to be used so in this case i'm going to be using html I can just click on copy code here and then i can just simply place it down here so just copy, paste it in there control v or command v save that and let's see what that looks like on our website so you can see that it's right here and it's uh, looking pretty good so what we can do for this one is let me just save that again and that's looking nice so let's just uh, give this a different background to actually show the users that this is a new section in here so at this point we can just simply change on this one let's change that to skills and then let's also set the background here so let me just remove this dark mode here or variant then let's set this to a lighter gray here all right so that's looking pretty good so instead of using this icons here, what I'm going to do is I'll just replace that with our Ionic icons here. So let me just delete this. And then I'll just go down here to the logos here. So maybe you want to just put on this one here. I'm going to use this and I'll replace that with this one. And then I'm going to be putting a JavaScript in this one. All right, so let me just little cut what it looks like here so that's looking pretty good so let me just add some class on this one all right so i want to make this just a little bit larger in here so inside this class attribute i'm going to be adding a text so for excel and instead of this text i'm going to go to our alarm ipsum generator just click that like this again and then i'm just gonna go down here and just space up to or highlight up to this area and just space it down here all right so i'm gonna give you a exercise here so i want you to do the 
rest of the features here or the skills here. So we're going to be adding the different logos in here. For example, we'll be adding NPM or React or any logos that you want in here or any skills that you want to highlight in here. So also just use the placeholder, our lorem ipsum generator, and just do this on all of the remaining cards here or boxes here. So let me just correct this. So I think we need to change this to a lighter green because it's the same color as our footer here. All right, it's looking pretty good. All right, so uh, just uh, do the rest of the feature or card here. And then on our next lesson, we'll be uh, looking at how we could implement responsive design. So we just have to do a one more final touch on our web portfolio here in order to complete our project. So uh, right now, if I maximize this, you'll notice that it's uh, looking pretty good on a, a full screen here. But then if I, let me just minimize this again. If I go to our responsive design mode, you'll notice that some of the text here or actually some of the contents are actually not looking good. One example is our menu here so let's just create a hamburger menu and create the menu just right for our mobile screen here aside from that if i go to full screen mode again the education here is not the way that we saw on our project preview so let's go ahead and fix that so i'm just going to go up here i'm going to go all the way up to our menu here and what i'm going to do is i'll just create the menu for our mobile screen here so what i'm going to do now is i'll just uh, find the right section here so i think i'll just place it below here so let me just go here and i'll just uh, press enter here and then i'm going to create a division in this area like so press enter and i'm going to add a class on this one all right, let me just delete that. We don't want all of those glasses in there or styling. I'm gonna add an absolute property in here. Put an inset of y zero, left zero. Add a flex of property items should be centered. And let's also make sure this is hidden or it doesn't display on small screen sizes. All right, so down here, we're gonna be placing our a button. So I'm going to give it a type of button here. And then I'm going to add a class of inline flex and items center here. All right, aside from that, I'll also make sure that this is justified to center. Add a rounded MD paddings, also some color for our text here. I'm going to be adding some animation when you hover the mouse here. So I'm going to be making the background to gray 700, just like so. Aside from that, I wanna set the focus ring to a white here. All right, so I think this is good. Now for uh, this a button, I'm also gonna be placing a, a span here of class. And let's set the SR to only, just like so. And you can see here that this is what the SR only does. It gives a position of absolute with 1px. And if we click this, you can see all of the attributes it's adding by just adding this class here for styling. All right, so now that this set, I'm going to close that. And I'm going to put open main menu here. So this shows whenever our icon doesn't show here. So on our other tab here, I'm going to go to Ionic icon, just like so. Then I'm going to look for our menu here again. I'll just click this. I think I want the field here. I'll just copy this and I'll just paste that down here. So we have a name menu and then I'm going to add a class again to make this bigger because if we look at here, I'm just going to refresh this and I'm going to go to our responsive design mode. You can see that. It's actually quite small here. So I'm just gonna add a, um, let's say I'm gonna add a text 
of extra large here. And then I'll be setting our onClick function here. So we're going to be adding a JavaScript code here so that we can toggle menus on this. All right, just like so. So I'm going to be hiding this area here. So I'll just go to this area here. I'm going to set this to get in. I'm going to set that to LG here. All right, let me just set this to hidden, just like so. So let's just hide it for now. And after this one, I'm going to be creating the menus for our mobile menu here. So let me just go down here. I'll just be placing it. Let me just look at the end of this tag here. So it's right here. And what I'm going to do is actually just create the menu just after this one here. So I'm going to be putting mobile menu so that we know that this is the section for our mobile menu. I'm going to copy this and I'll also paste that up here or somewhere around this one here so that we don't get confused and we can easily see this. Let me just fix this. All right, just like so. Now that we have that, in there, we can uh, now add our uh, mobile uh, menu here. So just uh, going to put it down here, create a division. All right, press enter in this one. I'm going to add a ID of mobile menu, which is a unique identifier that we can use later on for our JavaScript. So you can only add one ID on each division, or you can use one ID only with the same, or not the same name actually, an ID that only has that name. So you cannot use that name again on your other contents. So let's just set this to hidden first. Actually, I'm gonna leave it blank for now so that we can see what it looks like as we add some styling on it. So I'm gonna add a class on this one. I'm gonna close that. Going to give this a space y1 and px2 db3 just like so and then inside this we're going to be adding our anchor tag so i'm going to be putting a href here hashtag going to be adding a class back all right let me just delete this so it's kind of a getting annoying when that auto suggest keeps popping up so I'm going to add a 900 in here, text white, give it a block attribute, and px3, py2, a rounded md, set the text to base, give it a intensity on the font here, and I'm going to be adding home, just like so. I'm going to copy this, like three more times and then I'm going to be adding education on this one I'm going to put skills on this one I'm going to put projects on this one that's like so let's save that and, and now it looks like this so all right so I think we place it on the wrong division or section here so let me just highlight this we should be placing it outside of this division here just press enter and save that. All right. So this is how we would place it here. Now let's just add some a JavaScript on this one so that whenever we click this button here, it hides the menu. So I'm gonna go to our index file here, index.js file, and we're gonna be adding some JavaScript here. So I'm gonna say toggle, I'm gonna create a function here of toggle menu equals to e an arrow function and we're gonna say let toggle menu equals document dot query selector and we're gonna select the mobile menu we created earlier so I'm gonna enclose this to a here 
I'm just gonna hide this so that we can see it better, just like so. And then down here, I'm gonna say e dot name. So we're gonna access the name attribute on our uh, division, and then I'm gonna say if that e dot name is equals to menu, and if that's true, we'll set the e dot name to be close. All right. Aside from that, we'll also access the toggle menu, which is this one. And we're going to be adding or we're going to remove the class list. So I'm going to type dot remove, which is hidden. All right. And then if it's not true or if it's false, what we're going to do here is we're going to access e dot name again. And then we'll set that to menu. And also access the toggle a menu again. And then add hidden. Just like so. So let me just go here so we can see all of this. I'm going to wrap this one up. So let me just see. I think we're getting some errors here. So we need to enclose this to a parenthesis here. I'm just going to enclose that here. Just like so. I'm going to delete this and i'm gonna put it here just like so all right so let me just save this and then i'm gonna go back to our index.html file and then i'm just gonna add a hidden class here all right so now we can see that and if we click this you can now see those a menu perfect all right so a down here if I go to a full screen here, so I'm just going to click this and select the laptop screen. So you can see that it's not looking white. So it seems to be viewing or giving us the styling for mobile view here. So let me just hide this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down here to our education section. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, add another division here. So I'll just hide this first on large screen sizes and set that to hidden. And now you'll notice that we don't have that content already. But then if we go to our mobile here, you can see that it's showing again. So let me just go back to the laptop view here. And then in here, I'm just going to create another division. And then I'll set that to have a, a styling of hidden so i'm going to give it a class here and i'm going to add md flex justify this to center also going to make this width to full and then inside this division i'm going to add another division it's like so let's enter in this one give it a class of a flex flex column and also make sure these items are centered give it items end and i'm just setting the uh, breakpoints here so i'm going to give it also a border on the right of four border gray 300 i'm going to set the position to relative and also set the width for the medium breakpoint to a one or a half here all right at this point, again, I just copy the icons down here. So let me just go here. I'll just copy this, put that in here. And then, yeah, we'll just leave, leave everything at that end. And I can I just also copy this. You know, just select this. And then I can put it down here. Just like so. And then in here, we're just going to be doing some editing on the class here. So for here, I'm going to be adding a focus outline. And I'm going to set this uh, focus outline to none. Just like so. Also add it here. All right, so let me just save that. 
So we have that line in here. And then I'm just going to copy this one more time here. So let me just select this. I'm going to be selecting this one here. And I'll just paste that in here, just like so. So you can see if we go to full screen mode, we have this two here. So let's modify that one. So on this one, we'll set this to start. And then uh, this one going to be uh, deleting some of this. Just like so. And instead, I'm going to be adding MD W8 full. Just like so. Then we'll change this to rocket outline. Aside from that, we'll also be, let's just save this and see what it looks like. All right, so that looks better. Let's just uh, do some more refinements. All right, so let me just correct the spelling on this one. I'll change that to rocket. And then in here, I think I'm going to change this to just a uh, half here. All right, so I'm just going to be placing this icon down here. And then I think let's add some uh, more styling in here. So I'm going to be adding MD with a padding left of 12. And also add a border on a large screen size here. So I'm going to change the color to gray here. Add some paddings. Give it a top padding of zero. And down here, I'm just going to delete this. Let's add some flex. B6, flex home, so center the item, give it a items start, and also set the mid width here to 8, 12. Well, let's just save that and see what it looks like. All right, so that's looking pretty much better than what we have earlier. So let me just exit out of the responsive design mode. So this is what we want it to look like. And if I go to our mobile phone here, it's looking a different mobile phone. So we have finished a setting up our responsivity on our website. So this one's looking nice here. You can see that you can view this completely on your mobile screens. And we also have set the full screen mode on this one. So we have now have completed our web portfolio website. So for this module, we're going to be designing our mobile e-commerce website with Tailwind CSS and JavaScript. So once again, we're going to be making this project inside Visual Studio because it's a much more easier to add some uh, JavaScript codes and also separate each file. For example, we can just create a separate output.css file, a separate JS file, and a separate index.html file. Wherein, if we're going to be working in Tailwind, we have to put all of our codes inside the HTML tab, which is kind of uh, confusing. So we'll look at how we could set up our project on our next video. For now, let me just tour you on our website here. So this is the finished product. And you can see that we have a navigation bar. We also have our main section here in the header. And aside from that, we'll be creating some footer, some other sections. We're going to be adding some modal login and cart here. So if I click this, you can see that we have our login modal here. So let me just refresh this. If I click this, we have our cart here. So we can see a summary of our purchase here or our wish list here. So let me just click this so that we can go back here. And aside from that, we'll be implementing our responsivity for different screen sizes. So if I just go to the responsive mode here, you can see that it is responsive to different screen sizes. So you can see that it's looking pretty nice here. It's just a simple e-commerce website, which will give you an idea on how you can create your own. So let me just go to a different view here. Let me just check iPad here. So you can see that we have that set up here. We click this, we can go to the menu. So it's pretty cool, right? So let me just go back to the full screen mode here. So we'll just exit out of the responsive design mode. 
So after this module, you'll be able to have a good grasp of how you can start working on your own e-commerce website. So for this lesson, we're going to be setting up our project and start designing our website. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new folder here. So once we have that folder in there, we can now just um, put it in here and just click and drag that to our Visual Studio icon in here. So that will open up the folder inside the application here. Let me just enlarge that. And what I'm going to do next is I'm also going to be enlarging the size of this interface so that we can properly see it but then let me just go to the terminal here first so this is the new terminal here control shift or command shift tilde is the keyboard shortcut so i'll just click that and under the view here i'm gonna go to let me just check here appearance and zoom in on this one all right just like so let me just do that one more time appearance then go to zoom in the interface all right, so we can now easily view this even if you're watching on your normal screen. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'll make sure that I'm using Git Bash. So I'll just go here, and I'm going to type npm initialize or init. And then I'll specify why so that we don't have to go through all of that settings of setting up the name, version, and so on and so forth. Now under here, you can see that we have set this one up. So once we have that set up, what we'll be doing next is to install the a Tailwind component. So we can uh, go ahead and uh, do that by going to the Tailwind components here. So I'll we'll just type in npm install dash d Tailwind CSS. And uh, this will install the Tailwind components inside our application. So if you want to see how we do this and uh, how to find the resources, you can go back to the previous lessons that we had on how to get started with Tailwind CSS in Visual Studio. And from there, we have explained everything in greater detail. All right, so now that we have the components that we need here, the next thing that we're going to do is we'll be typing npx Tailwind CSS in it. So, what this does is to create the necessary files and folder inside our application here. And I'm going to create new folders here. So, I'm going to create one for our distribution and another folder for our source here. All right, so now that we have a set that up under our tailwind.config.js, I'm just gonna go here and I'm just gonna specify where we will get the resources for our code here. So I'm gonna type in this, and that's because we have this one, and this is where we'll be putting our index.js and our HTML file here. So once we have specified that, I'm going to put in this asterisk and put on a period. And in here, I'm just going to type in HTML and a JS. Just like so. All right. So now that we have a set that up, can I just go here and I'm going to create a file here. I'm going to put in index.html. Also put in index.js and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an input a CSS file here where we will be putting the directives for our Tailwind CSS. So I'm just going to click this again and I'm going to type in input.css and here I'm going to specify the directives that we need. I'm Tailwind base at Tailwind components and last one would be tailwind utilities just like so i save that control s or command s to save it and down here we're going to be um, executing a command again so i'll just type in npx tailwind css dash i dot source slash source input dot css slash o dot this output. Now, if we check on our this here, we should be able to have output CSS later on. So I'll just type that in here CSS double dash watch. So once I enter this, it will be creating all of the components for our CSS here. So let me just see if that's right here. 
So npx tailwind CSS. So it should be dash i here. I'm just correct that. Just use my keyboard to correct that one. We have dot source input dot CSS dash o dot slash dist output CSS double dash watch. Right. So just make sure you're putting in the right commands in here. So I'll just press enter now. And it should be able to install all of the Tailwind components. So you can see that we have output CSS right now. Now we can attest this. So I'm going to go to index.html and I'm going to type in HTML. And I'll click this. So we have our a basic HTML structure. I'm going to be putting on a, let me just undo that here. And uh, first type in my portfolio. And let's test that out. I'm going to be putting a heading here of hello. I'll save that. And of course, we need to specify the styling or where we'll be getting that styling. So I'm going to click on this link here. And the reference would be our output.css file. And then we can now add some styling. So I'm going to put class. And I'm going to make it a little bit larger here. Make it to Excel and give it a text color of red. Or let's uh, specify gray here. I think I'm going to go with red here. So let's do that. Press Control S or Command S to save that. And then I'm going to open it with Live Server. And if you want to know how to install this, you can once again go back to our getting started lesson. So I'm just I'm going to wait for it to open. And you can see that it applied those changes. We have a, a larger font here and has that color that we have specified. So we have successfully installed our Tailwind CSS. Now, just to test our index.html here, or index.js, I'm going to alert here, just like so. And of course, we need to specify where we'll be getting those JavaScript files. I'm going to click on source. And inside, we'll be specifying index.js here. So once I save this, we should be able to get an alert on our preview page here. So let me just go back here, click on our preview page. Let me just refresh this. All right, so we're not getting that. Let me just go back to our code here. I'll press save on this one. I'll press save on this one. And then let me just check index.js. Yeah, that should be right. And let me just go back to our code here. Let's go back to our preview. So now we have that alert in here. So we have successfully installed Tailwind CSS and JavaScript on our machine. So on our next lesson, we'll be looking at how we could start designing our navigation section for our web portfolio. Now that we have set up our project, we can now start designing our e-commerce website here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this. If you actually remember on the last video, we've uh, used the video that we use on our web portfolio website because it's just the same setup in order to start working inside Visual Studio. So I'll just change this now to e-commerce website. And if you don't know yet, uh, this title determines what will show on the tab here. So if I press on Control S or Command S, you can see that it changed to the title that we put it in here. So in here, you'll notice I already have the uh, menu. So we already saw how we can do it on the uh, last module. So we're going to be skipping on the important parts here so that we are not actually repeating most of the stuff. So now we're going to be designing our header for our e-commerce website. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go down here. Let me just go all the way down here. And I'm just going to create a division here, just like so. And then I'm going to add a class here. And I'm going to be adding a container class. Set this x-axis of its margin to auto just like so i'm going to put a flex property here and also some flex column items will be centered inside of this division let's add some paddings just like so and then inside of this division i'm going to be adding a heading so i'll put h1 here 
And I'm going to give this a class of, let's just give it a blank class here first. I'm just going to type in shop without leaving the comforts of your home. Let me just delete this and save that again. So we can see that in here. Now we're going to be adding some style. So just make sure that before you do some styling, make sure that the NPM is running. So you can just go here on our menu and go to terminal, click on the new terminal. Right now I'm using Bash here and you can see that it's running at the moment. So if you don't know yet how to do that, I'll just exit this and type in NPM run dev. So if you want to know while or why we are running that, you can check on how to get started on our previous video. And we explained that on greater detail on that video. So right now this is set. So I can just close this. And if you want to see all of your codes or contents inside Visual Studio in one window, you can go here, go to view, make sure that you have word wrap checked. All right, so now that we have set this one up, we can now continue working on our website. So let's add some styling for our H1 here. So I'm going to go to here to the class here, make it a little bit larger here. So I'll set that to maybe to extra large. I'll also be adding some a text center alignment here. Change the color to a darker gray. Give it a heavy font here and I'll also be adding some bleeding here let's put seven in there just like so all right let me just remove this this is a little bit redundant here all right now that we have set that in here I think I want to add some color on some word here so let's emphasize the word comforts so that we can give the audience a feel of comfort on our furniture so you can see the name here is furniture so it's like a funny website name so let me just put a span here just like so and i'll put this word here inside the span now i'll be adding some class here and i'm just going to add blue 700 let me just delete this other styling that we don't need and let's see what that looks like All right so that's looking pretty good now um let me just add some other styling in here all right now that we have set that in here i'm actually going to be putting it inside the header now so i'll just put the header here and put that down here so let me just fix this and inside our header i'm going to be adding a class so I'm going to put a text, or let me just add a width here of 11, 12. Then I also make sure that this is justified center. Items are center. And let's give it a margin of bottom here. Save that to see what that looks like. So let me just change this to a larger size. All right, that's better. I'm going to be putting flex here and flex column. All right, looking good. And then I think we want to set the letting here to a bit larger. So let me just check the other ones here. Set it to maybe nine here. Actually, let's just set this to just 3XL. All right. It's looking better. Now down here, I'm going to add a paragraph, just like so. And I'll just go to our lorem ipsum generator so that we can use some placeholders. Just click this. And then down here, I'm just going to copy up to this area here. Control C or Command C to copy that and paste it here. Control V or Command V. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so let's just add some style. I'm gonna put a margin top five here and also add a text 
color of gray 900 so make sure that it is centered here let's make the text a little bit smaller here give it a font weight of normal and let's set the width here to 10 12. All right looking pretty good so we have set our header here on the next video we're going to be adding our main section and once again we'll be putting the header inside of our main section and add some background image to complete our main section on our last lesson we have set up our header inside our project here so in this video we're going to be focusing on the main section so i'm just going to add the main html tag here just like so and then i'm gonna cut this and put this down here all right and inside of this main tag here i'm gonna add a class so let's just leave it empty for now before that we can just add the a button here so let's just add a shop now action button here so i'm just gonna go down here on the header and i'm gonna be placing the button right here so i'm just creating a div here just like so then let's just add, add a class here i'm going to be adding a flex on this one let's make sure that it is justified to center i'm going to make sure it's center here by putting item center and inside this division let's add a button here so i'm going to add a button set the class to an empty class for now just like so and then i'm gonna add the shop now button all right now we can add the class that we want or the styling that we want one by one so let's set the background first to blue i'm gonna put on 700 in this one and then i'm gonna be adding a, a large text for or text for this one set that to maybe xl here and uh, let's set the font to bold give it a rounded radius or corner here let's set the text to white with a padding of four and finally some borders on this one so i'll set the color of the border to indigo 700 let's save that all right looking pretty good in here but maybe let's um let me just add some padding on the y-axis here to save that all right it's looking good let's also add some hovering effects so i'm gonna add a hover here and i'm gonna set the hover to change the background color to blue 600. all right now when we hover here you can see that it changes color now let's add a, a background image on our main section here so once again we'll be using the links instead of using the local files here or image because it's actually better if you do that because for example if you're using or you're going to be using an image that is a very high in resolution that's going to take up a large file size and if you're using links from a third-party website you can easily just use their resources whenever the user visits the website so in here i'm going to be placing bg and close that to a bracket here and put an url inside and parenthesis inside this parenthesis we're gonna go to pexels.com and let's look for a good background image so i'm gonna type furniture here just like so let me just cancel this one out and let's see all right this is the one that we used from the project preview here so we'll just click this right click on that click on copy image link go back to our website here paste that in here and let's see what that looks like i'll just save this all right it's looking pretty good let's just uh, set the styling here so i'm just gonna go here and i'm gonna add a h of screen give it a bg cover let's set the bg to no repeat save that and, and now that we have this style here so we have completed our main section we have the button we have the background here and we want to make a parallax effect you can just add a fix we just set the bg to fixed here just like so so now we 
are going to be having a parallax effect on this one. As soon as we add some new section on our e-commerce website. Right now, we cannot scroll at the moment because we only have this contents. So on the next lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to create our footer section for our website. So we have finished designing our main section and our header here. So now we can start working on our footer section in this video. So I'm just gonna, gonna create a comment here. Just gonna name this footer section. And once again, it's important to practice writing comments so that you can easily segregate or easily find out what that section or content is for, and also find out those sections that you need to access or modify. So down here, I'm gonna be creating the footer tag here, just, Put it down there. I'm going to be adding a class on this a footer here. So I'm going to be setting the class to a background of gray here. So let me just type it inside this class here. All right, let me just correct that. So I'll just put in 200 here. And I'm going to give it a padding of 4 and a padding on the y axis of 12. Let's save that. So this is what it looks like. Down here, I'm going to be creating another division again. I'm going to give it a class empty. Let's set that to flex, flex column, set the items to center out, and also justify that to center. So I give it a closing tag here. And inside this division, let me just add our title here. So I'm going to be putting an H1 here. Actually, I'm just going to go up here and let's copy this logo here that we have for our website so let me just search it control f or command f to access the find tool here all right so i'm just going to copy this Control c or command c to copy that go down here on our footer section and i'll just paste that in here all right so now we have it down here all right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is um, I'll just add another a division for this one so that we can add the menus that we have up here. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to create another division. And I'm going to add a class here. All right, so let's just use this one. Then I'll just delete some of this trio. Let's just use all of them. Let's just add some flex wrap here and also add a margin top of eight. Okay, let's save that. And then in here, I'm going to be putting the uh, menus for our footer here. So let me just go up here instead. Let's go back to our menu section. In fact, let's just type it. Because I will be adding new classes on this one. So I'm going to create an anchor tag, put on href here. Let's just put on hashtag here. So we don't have a link yet. So let's just add a hashtag. And actually, I'm going to use JavaScript for zero because whenever you put a hashtag, it refreshes the page. Wherein, if you just put JavaScript void zero, it actually doesn't go anywhere. So it's like a, a void and it doesn't do anything. So I'm going to add a uh, text of base here let's make the cursor to pointer i'm going to be adding a letting on this one of four let me just add our text here and see what it looks like so i'm going to add home here just like so so this is what it looks like down here so let's add some additional uh, styling on this one let's uh, set the color to gray 800 and i think i want to add some hover effects too so i just hover here and set the color to text gray 500. all right let's do that so you can see that it has that hovering effect in there now what i'm going to do next is just copy that a few more times here one, two, three, four. 
me see what we have on the menu here. So we have home, catalog, top cell, and blog. So just put in catalog here. Add top cell, blog, and contact us. I'll save that. And now we have it in here. Actually, let's just remove this contact us here. Save it. You can see that they are evenly distributed here. So let me just see how we can adjust this. So just um, actually a look down here and let's just, just define this to center. All right, that's not looking good. So I think what we can do here is to just add some a gap in between the menus here. So I can just go here on a division here. I'm going to add gap of 8. Just save that again. And then let's make that 10 here. All right, let me just see here. Let's see. save that. Oh, I forgot to change the justification here to a center. Oh, let us just save this and you can see that it's now looking good here. All right, so what we can do next here is add our a social media icon. So I'm just going to go down here again and under this division, I'm going to create another division here. Let's press enter on this one, set the class to empty let's put on flex here and we'll center out the items give it a gap on the x-axis wait set the margin top to six let me just fix this and then we're going to be putting a button type here for our social media icon so let's set the class here and i'll just delete this gonna add a uh, focus here with the ring set of two focus ring again offset of two focus ring again of ray 800 and another focus here for the outline none let's make that rounded Pool also. Yep, just like so. Set this to none. And let's um, enclose this. So inside of this button, we're going to be adding our icons. So on your tutorial assets folder, we have the SVGs and image that we've used on the previous video. So you can just open that. Mine is already open here. And you can just copy this Google here. And then I'll just paste that inside here and save that. Let's see what that looks like. So it's right there. So with that in there, let's just add some class here. Oh, so there's a class here. I'm just going to be adding an additional class. I'm going to set the text to gray here. Maybe give it a 800. class here and then I'm just going to be copying this a few more times here so just use this button here and then paste that a few times here all right so we have that in there and I'm gonna change the SVGs that we've used inside that so I'll copy the Twitter here now replace this SVG here, just like so. Copy this one for Facebook and replace the one we have here at the bottom. Just like so. Let's just center this one out here. So I'm just go here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a text center property here. All right, so that didn't work. So all right, so I think what I'll do now is just make sure that we have the white div here. So that's set in there. And then go up here again. 
from our division here just go here and just add a justify center here again just like so let's save that all right so we now have that in there so let me just add a margin top of full all right let me just make so we have that in here already let's just add some more margins just like so now under this uh, short soil media icons we're going to be adding another content so down here i'll just look at the bottom area here so i'm going to add it here and create another division for this one let me just correct that like so gonna give it a class of flex item center justify between let me just delete the other so I'll just add this one here and just add a yeah, closing tag here all right let me just correct this like that put this one here and then instead of maybe adding a, a margin top of six inside this i'm going to be adding a paragraph i'm going to add a 20 21 furniture pretty witty eh? so i'm going to add a span here and put this inside here so we got how we'll have that in there and then I'm just gonna add a class here. Set that to backspace. Give it a heading of four. Give it a color of gray eight hundred. And I want to center out this one too. Let's justify this to center here. My center, just like so. And then for the span here, I'm going to be giving it a class of font semi bold. So we can emphasize that more. Right? Down here, I'm going to be adding another division. So I think I'll just put it inside this division here. Add a class. Let me set the border left border gray 800 adding left of two margin left of two and let's add a paragraph in here of ink all rights reserved just like so and add a class here set the text base letting of four text gray to 800 let's save that Right, so we now have completed our footer section. So since we have completed our three important sections, we can now start working on our login model. And after that, we'll be working on the cart model and so on and so forth until we complete all of the website here. So all of that and more, I'll see you in the next lesson. So we will now start designing our model for our e-commerce website here. So I'm just going to go to full screen here and I'll just go here and we'll place our login icon in here. So we'll put it down here under the model login button for our codes with an anchor tag. And again, we'll be using the Ionic icon. So I have it open here. Just make sure you copy this on your header here. I have mine copied already and I'll just go down here and then go to icons and we have the icon for our login so we have the field copied and place it here control v or command v to paste that in there and i'm going to be styling this icon in here i'm going to add a class tag or attribute here and then we'll put in a, a larger text for this icon so we have that in there we will be creating another class and we'll be just adding as some uh, focus attributes or properties on this one and then we'll just add a color and then we'll set the focus a ring color also to a gray 800 and i'll also be putting a hover animation so that whenever we hover our mouse to uh, this button for our login 
we'll be able to see is some animations. All right, so I'm going to be just adding an href of JavaScript 0, and you can see that when I hover the mouse, we have some focus also when we click the mouse on our icon. Now, again, the JavaScript void 0 actually lets you click the element without getting any behavior on it. For example, if we use the hashtag, it will refresh the website. But then if you use JavaScript void 0, it will actually let us click that element without getting any actions on it. So down here, I'm just uh, going to create our uh, model login design here. So whenever we click that button, a model login pops up. So I'm going to be adding an ID, set that class in here, relative, place a Z index in here. I'll set the overflow to auto for the Y axis. And then I think I'll just delete that. And I'll just set the division down here as a class here. Let's uh, make that fix. So we'll be placing, or this is going to be the overlay for our mono login. So we'll have like a gray background, as you can see here, that has a opacity or transparency of a 75 year. I'll set the transition opacity also. And then down here, we're going to be creating the container for our model login. So down here, we got, we're going to set another div. And I'm just going to comment out and put overlay here so that we know what that section is for. And whenever you create login models, uh, most designers or uh, web developers uh, make it as a model because it actually saves space. So instead of going to another page, they just um, put it in the same page and just make it a, a model pop-up. And that way, users can easily just uh, click a button, and then they'll be able to log in or register. But then it has some pros and cons, mostly if you're after search engine optimization. All right, so now we've uh, set this here. I'll just put in a overflow for this division. Set it to hidden. Set it to a rounded corners here. I'm going to be adding a shadow. and. I think this is uh, good already, All right? So I'm just uh, going to go down here and I'll set another division. And then inside this, I'm going to be adding a class again, just like so. And set that to white, adding a uh, four for the x axis and five for the top here. So as I do this, I'm actually just picturing out what it looks like on our page here so again for example on our padding if it says four it doesn't necessarily mean it's actually four it's actually just a number referring to let's say four rams which is equal to a certain pixel size now in here i have the links we're going to be using this one just to save time so we don't need to look for a picture or an icon that we'll be using to other websites here. So I have everything ready on your tutorial assets folder. All you have to do is just copy and paste it. But then if you want to actually use another resource, you can do so. But if you want to follow along and don't want to search other resources, you can do so in here. All right, so I'm just setting up this uh, division here. So inside this division, I'm going to be adding a styling first. We'll set that to a back on white, just like so. Give it a shadow, rounded corners. We'll set the width to full. And then inside at this one, we'll be adding paragraphs here, our contents. I'll set that to tab index zero, give it a class. And I'll just type in log into your account first here so that we can see that. So it seems that we can see it here at the moment. Let me just check that. Now let me just open it again with live server. And there you go, we can see it now. So uh, sometimes you uh, just need to debug because there is some error with the applications. But then it um, rarely happens. But then when it does, all you need to do is just to uh, restart the uh, live server or in most cases, the application itself. So now we're seeing it in here. And I'll just uh, copy this, place it down here. I'll just uh, make this smaller. 
and change this to 500 here and just change that to don't have an account set this to medium here all right so i'll set also set this to none and yeah let's uh, save this and i'll maybe let me just add some margin here all right so i think we have that on the wrong place here so let me just correct that i'll just copy that in here paste that in here all right let me just i'll just copy it in here and put this on top of this one and then let me just copy just copy this and down here just like so and then just change this to a smaller one make this larger and then yep you can see that we don't need to emphasize that don't have an account so just need to make sure that the login to your account is emphasized so i'm going to be creating an anchor tag here for the sign up here so it's going to be adding a class here set the href to set that to javascript boy zero so no don't need to refresh the page whenever we click it it's just for a placeholder anyways i'm going to be having a hover effect on this one i'll send that to create 500 make this a smaller for the text and give it a weight of font medium here all right let's uh, set the cursor pointer in here now uh, we want that to be beside you don't have an account here so i'll just place it here and we have that in there now all right so let's uh, also set the a button here i'm going to be in a type of button and i'm going to be adding a class here so let me just place that in there i'm going to give it a class of padding first set the corners to round will also have a flex and make sure the items are centered with a full width and also a margin top of 10 here inside this i'm going to be placing an image and i'm just uh, going to go back to our links here this is the second one here i'll place that in there and then you can see that we have that in there so it's actually the logo button for google so i'm going to Please continue with Google. All right, now let's just uh, fix this paragraph here inside that button. So we have the base. Let's set the font weight here. We'll also be adding some margins at the left here. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. All right, so at this point, maybe I can just copy this button here two times. And let's just change on the image source here to this one. And I'm going to copy this again. Let me just go up here. Just copy this and go down here and paste that. Just like so, and I'll just change this. Actually, it's a GitHub here. And down here, we'll place Twitter. And let's save that. All right. It's looking pretty good. Now, um, the gap, it's, uh, it's actually too wide here. So maybe we want to fix the gap for our buttons here. So let me just change. Yeah, I'll just remove that and i think we removed the wrong one let me just undo that now let me just check here all right here we go it's the margin top that we need to remove here so just remove that all right so i think they're too close now let me just go bring that back uh, set that to two all right been pretty good now uh, i think i'm a bit oc on this one um let me set that to four here so let me set that to four Go up here, set that to four, save that, and yep, yeah, it's giving us a, a nice gap here. So down here, I'm going to be creating a new division. So I'll give it a class of pool for the width, give it a flex position. Item should be centered and justified centered. So we'll, I'll also be placing an HR here, a separator for our email so we'll be setting our users to be able to log in using the google github or twitter function or actually the accounts 
or we can put them to use their emails, their own emails that they have signed up for. So you can see that we have the sign the or here with the HR and down here, I'm going to be putting some input. So let me just hide that and just paste that in here. And just put input type here, email, placeholder for the email. If that's actually kind of hard to talk while you do this, but then um, we'll mostly get the hang of it. So it's like uh, doing a multitasking in here. So pardon me if I'm getting some text here wrong spelled or if I'm missing out something here. All right, so let's just place all that. So we have a duplicate on that one. Let's just set that to three. And then let's just uh, post that and we can have it, or we have it in here. We have a field of email in there now. So I'm gonna be creating another div. Set a class on this one. Let's stylize that. I'll be putting a margin top of six with this full and gonna be adding another division set a styling on this one again place a relative kind of centered justify center once again i'm going to be placing an input in this one for the password so placeholder is going to be password like so i'm going to be setting an id here for our password let's set that to pass type is going to be password and Normally, you would add IDs if you will access it later on with either JavaScript or you will give it a, a unique property that's uh, only for that element. So, we'll set the styling in here, just like so. I'm going to be with full margin top of two. And let's just save that. So, we have that in there. So, let me just, let me just um, reduce the margin top here, all right? Just like so. Finally, we'll just set the button here for our login. So I'm just going to create a division. Give it an absolute positioning in here. Let me just correct the spelling on this one, just like so. And set that to right a zero. Margins are set. Cursor is going to be a pointer. And then I'm going to add an image source here. So we're going to be using the last SVG image we have here. Let's copy that, paste that in here. Going to be closing that and let's uh, save that. So we have that eye icon in here. So just like whenever you're using a Facebook or whenever you register, that eye icon lets you see your password so that you can know if you're writing the correct password. But then we would be adding a function in here. What we're doing here is just a designing our model. Mostly in this uh, module, we're going to be designing the JavaScript codes that we're using here are just the basic ones so that you can just uh, get a grasp of how you can uh, use JavaScript. For example, in this case, we're going to be adding a JavaScript behavior here wherein if we click the login button, we'll show this. So now we have set our login button. You can see that we have the uh, button in Indigo. Let's just set this to hidden. Now we're going to be adding the JavaScript here. So I'll just go to index.js. And then down here, I'll just place our code here. So it's going to go to our HTML. We're going to use the name we set here. So it's the model handler login. I'll just copy that, paste that in here. And then I'm going to be creating a function out of it. So this is an arrow function. And what's inside the curly braces is going to be the function that it will do whenever we click the login button so i'm going to set this class list to remove the hidden if you remember earlier we have set a class of hidden that's why we cannot see the model right now and then we'll create a variable of model login and this one sets the document to select the modal login division in here so now if we click that you can see that we now have that modal login pop-up so uh, there you have it. That's how you can easily design uh, your modal login pop-up.
So in this lesson, we're going to be creating our model cart up up here or designing the model cart here. I'm just going to go up here and if you click this, you'll see we have this login here. And you're going to be noticing that I have done some requirements on it. I'll just copy this and use the same template here and just change this one. And we'll also be changing the icon. So I'll just go to our Ionic icon here and then we'll click this and type cart and just copy this. Be placing that in here. Actually, I can just change the name on the Ionic icon in here. So I'll just change this to cart, just like so. And now we have that cart icon in there. And down here, we're going to be designing our cart or modal cart. So I'll just be placing it below our login cart here. So I have created a comment so that we'll know that this is the model for the cart. So we may be able to use the same template. So I'll just use the login modal template here. And we'll just delete some parts that we don't need. So I'll just place it down here. And then we'll keep this. Just go up here and let me just check. We don't need so um, maybe we can just delete maybe keep that area and uh, we'll just delete this area here we'll just go down here and okay let's see so it's uh including the ones that we need so let's just delete all of this all right i think that's uh pretty much it so we have that in here. Just I'm actually checking that out. So I think we have everything set. Now we just need to change this once here. Just delete that, set that to full, change to full. Background should be black here. Set that to 90, top to zero. And again, you'll notice that I might have done some uh, refinements in our model login for the last lesson. And as a challenge, I also encourage you to do the same. So as we finish each lesson, I have been doing some refinements. Aside from that, I have been purposely leaving some mistakes on the codes here so that you can check out what's wrong and correct them. For example, you might notice that on our main section here, there is a word that this spelled wrong here so it's up to you to find out and correct them so it's actually a practice of uh, checking out your code and uh, debugging it actually when you take some um, exam or some interviews um, some interviewers will actually make you code something and messed up the code and they'll make you uh, debug the code and make it work again so it's very important to actually be mindful of the uh, details that you type and also make sure that you check the uh, spelling of each of the class or styling codes because again we're using tailwind components here and it's important to uh, match them to make sure that it will uh, work together with our html codes so in here i'm just uh, setting another division i'll just uh, give it a class here and then we'll set that to adding four for the x-axis, four for the y-axis with a background of white. And then also be adding an overflow here. We'll set that to hidden. So we'll also do the same for the x-axis. And then I'm going to be making the height auto with an ID of a scroll. So this is uh, going to be the container where we'll be putting the summary of our purchase or the wish list itself so i'm going to be adding a flex item here with a text of gray i'm also going to give it a on click function so that we can set the javascript later on and inside this one i'll be creating an image and we'll set the source here so again on your tutorial assets folder i have uh, prepared everything you need so we just go there and we can just copy all of this and paste that in there just like so and i'm gonna be adding a paragraph here back save that 
and let's just give it a class here of uh, text. Um, let me just put it inside station marks, just like so, adding left to leading to a non. Save that. Well, let me just remove the hidden here so we can see what it just looks like. Right. So right now it's just this one. We just need to do some refinements and fix this. All right. So let's just create another division underneath this. So this uh, is still a lot of work. We need to add some the products, add some styling to make sure that it's uh, responsive. But then we'll look at the responsiveness of our website here later on on this course. So for now, let's just uh, design this. And then on the next lesson, we'll be adding some more section to our website here. So I'm just uh, I'm creating a division here. I'm going to give it a style of pool here for the width. And then I'm going to set an image here. So again, on our useful, we have this um, links here. So I have prepared a image for the desktop version and also mobile version. So you see that we're using a shoe here. So we're actually creating a website for furniture, but then we have a shoe here for our product. So it's up to you to change this to a, a furniture image. So you can go to pexels.com or unsplash.com and just look for a furniture and you know how we could copy the image link. So try to give yourself a challenge and do it yourself. If you need help on how to do it, you can just go back to our previous videos. And from there, you can actually just follow along again and see how you could add an image link inside our HTML codes. All right, so I'm just uh, setting on the styling for our text here. So. We're just going to give it a placeholder text in here. So I'm just giving you an idea of how you can design your e-commerce website. So we're just going to be placing mostly placeholders for our products here. So this is actually some of some of the most common designs when graphic artists designs their e-commerce website. So let me just change this. I'll just uh, put this uh, maybe A B. All right, so let's just uh, use the starting alphabet here. Just gonna style this. Give it a text base, font black, letting none. Text is gray 800, just like so. All right, it's looking pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna be putting a, a select tag in here. So be placing, or we're gonna be putting some numbers in here so that some users can choose how many quantity they want. So let's just place up to three here. All right. And we can also maybe use this selection or select tag to maybe put on some colors in here. So it's up to you what you want to put on the options here. All right. So let's just set that to 200. Set the margin right here and just like so. So we have that in there. All right, the next thing we want to do is I'm going to be creating another division or paragraph here. We'll set the specifications of our product here. So we have the height. Let's give that a class here of a um, smaller size, letting three, text is three, 600, and adding top two. I'll copy that a couple of times here, maybe just a one time here. So I'll just change this to color, set that to white. All right. That's pretty good. Copy that again and set that to composition 100% of this leather. So let's set the width here to 96. And yeah, right. Now that we have completed this um, specification here, let me just add another division here. Set the class. Give it a flex um, positioning here. Item should be centered. Just correct that. And place a paragraph here. 
had to favorites. So of course, when you are buying stuff, you would typically be having mostly a favorite button, a remove button, of course, a go to cart button or a go to checkout button. And then you would have another page for the checkout page where you can finalize everything. So in here, we're actually just creating the cart model here so that the users can see the summarize of their cart here. All right, so I'll just be, just be placing here. Just place another division here because I don't want to touch the other division. Just uh, put a item center here, justified between. Give it a padding top of five, and then I'll just put it down here. All right, so it's looking good now. All right, so I'll just copy this and then change this to 500, set that to a base. Just delete this, give it a font black, flooding is none, text gray of 800, and right, I'll just copy that outside here so that we can have it on the right side. All right, so that's looking pretty good. At this point, I can just copy this whole container here so that we can add another product, but then we're going to be using the same template. We're going to be using the same template, so we can just copy this here and there you go. We have highlighted that, and I'll just paste that underneath here, just like so. So, yeah, it's up to you. You can change the second product if you want to add a furniture image and change on the information. You can do so. So just uh, treat it like a, a real project and try to add a different style on it so that you can also use it as a portfolio. All right, so I'm just uh, setting on another division here. This is going to be the division for our summary. We'll have the information like the total cost, the shipping fee information, or the tax information. So I'm just uh, setting this to have a summary here. So you can see that there. And create another division. So the class here to flex with an item of center. Just define this to between and put a padding top of 16. All right, just like so. And I'll set this to have a paragraph here. And we'll type subtotal. All right. So give it a class here. I'll just uh, place that inside a class. All right. So, well, the good thing about a VS Code is it kind of learns when you code or as you code. It kind of memorizes how you do the coding inside the program, and it gives suggestions of how you can create the codes. For example, as uh, what I did there when I added a class, it actually suggested the styling that I have used earlier. And uh, that's the good thing about the Visual Studio or VS Code. It remembers what the users did last time or what it commonly does and gives suggestions about it. But then there's also some very effective plugins that you can use, like uh, GitHub has its own plugin that uh, really learn and remembers how you behave inside Visual Studio. And actually, it actually even surpasses you sometimes. So it's uh, actually really good to have uh, plugins. So you can just go to extension and just explore different plugins that you can use that will really help you on your coding journey. All right, so I'm just going to be putting a division here, and you can see that we have that background here and it's um, looking pretty nice here so what i'm going to do next is just uh put a division down here so you might notice that as i 
do the codes, we are encountering some errors and we're actually debugging it as we do this code. So we're going to be just putting a panning top 20 here and then I'll just uh, give it a class here. Letting normal. So you might notice the components that we are mostly using. So we use letting, we use flex, we commonly use item center and a justify center, and we always use padding and margin. For the font, we use the font for different font weights, font black, medium. We also use the components of text color and background color. So there is actually a pattern on creating the a website. So when you do a lot of website, you'll be able to easily learn this and you'll memorize most of this. So just keep building websites, even uh, just for fun. And uh, you might be able to also use it as your portfolio when you apply for a, a real-time job or projects. I'm just going to set this to 500 and then let me just correct this. Set a border gray here. Of, let me just correct this again. And then it's going to be the button for our checkout. So I'm going to place checkout here. I'm going to set the text to white. All right, so now we have it in here. So you can see that we have completed our checkout portal in here. So on the next lesson, we'll be adding some a more section on our website, and then we'll fix this and add some responsiveness on the upcoming lessons. Let's now add some more section on our website. So I'll just go up here and we'll just go before our main section and down here, I'm just gonna create a comment to put sections and i'm going to be creating a division here so create a section html tag here we'll be adding a class i'm going to give it a um, styling in here so i'll just uh, set this to have a padding of eight on the y-axis post that section and inside the section i'm going to be creating a, a division here all right just like so so once again, we're going to be adding styling here. Let me just correct this. It's um, items, not times, center, justifies between. Then I'm going to be adding division here. And then we'll set that to, we just have a class here again. Play class, set the width to one third here. Create an H1. With indoor interiors. I'll just put a class on our heading here, just like so, and then add a text of 4XL, font of semi bold. So let's make this larger because this is a new section. So now we have it there, and then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be adding a paragraph. We'll go here to our Lorem Ipsum generator and Down here, I'm just going to copy it. So I'll just highlight at this area here and paste that in there. Let's uh, save that and we'll be adding some class to it. All right, so I'll be adding a text base here, letting is six, margin top of four, text grade 600, and yep, looks uh, pretty good. So let's um, just add uh, some adding in here for the x-axis all right just like so so you can see that whenever you create a section it actually doesn't really matter if you put it on a section tag or a division tag because normally as for me if you're going to be using the section html tag when you're creating contents or a different section of your website it is actually easier to know that that is really a different section. And from there, you can just add some comments to make it more easier. 
So I'm just uh, setting the items here to center. And for example, when you're actually creating footers, you can also use division, but then using the footer HTML tag is much more easier. And it's really letting you know that these uh, footer tag is uh, for footer contents. All right, so I'm just gonna add some class here. So you can see that we have some links already prepared for you on the tutorial assets folder. So I have uh, just copied it in there. And I'm gonna add a class here and set that to eight. And set a division here. The full, hide the spool, back to its red. 200 and I'm going to be placing an image here all right so I'm going to go back to our links here we just open that and um, just, uh, copy this one here so I have um, added again a mobile version and a desktop version in here so you can see that we have that in here now let me just Copy this again so that we can just paste it down here. We'll use the same template and then I'll just copy this and change the link here. Just like so. Um, seems that we need to do some refinements. So I'll just um, change this, right? I'll set a grid here. So we're going to be adding a grid class. I'm going to give it a gap of six, margin top of four. All right, that's looking uh, better now. So let's the grid columns to two. All right. Well, let me just um, copy this and I'll just copy this actually and paste that in here and then change whatever is inside the source of this image and paste that in there. Let's uh, save it and uh, let's see what it looks like. So, all right, looking a better. So we have two columns down here. Let me just change this. We already copy this. And then I'll copy this one here. So we're actually experimenting on the looks of our section in here. Well, that doesn't look good actually. So let me just add some. All right, that's uh, not looking good for the width here. So let's just delete that. So I'll just look at full screen and um, yeah, that's uh, not looking good. So let me just minimize that again. Let's delete that. So instead of using that there, I'll use the mobile version in here and uh, replace that here. All right, that's looking pretty good. It looks like a collage of photos here. So that's looking better this time. All right, so I'm going to remove this. And uh, you can see that still not looking good on the desktop mode, but then we're going to be fixing that on the in next video when we make our section and elements here a responsive on different screen sizes. So I'll just copy here. So we're actually going to be creating more sections. So instead of typing that, um, I have added some links where we can get templates. So in here, we can just search here, click on this one and copy the code and then we'll just paste that down here All right so let's see what it looks like save that and you see we have the top selling section here let's uh let me just go up here i'll just change the background color for this section i'll just add a bg gray of uh, let's say 100 here All right and good and once again i'll go back to the links copy this again this is a different site here so you can also go to tailwindui.com and then they also have different templates that you can use so you can just copy that and then let's go down here this is not at the end of this section so I'll place that in there save that and let's look at what it looks like here so there you have it so we might need to just um, save it again let me just add a margin of 20 here well that's too much so now it's looking good so sometimes you just need to save it twice before it shows what really is the styling so now we have 
finish creating a different sections for our website. And let's now work on the responsiveness on the index lesson. So this is our website now. It's complete, but it needs some fixing in terms of responsiveness. So let me just turn on the responsive design mode here. And you can see this is our mobile screen view. Most of it looks good in here because some of the, or most of the components that we've used are already responsive. But then we need to fix on the section that we have for the interior section. And I'll, I'll just go here. I'll set the breakpoint for the large screen size here to have a padding of 20 on the x-axis. And for the medium breakpoint, we'll set that to PX6. And I'll also be adding a breakpoint for the large screen size here of flex. And in this one, I'll set also the width to, let's pick that to one third, just like so. And, and that's uh, looking better now. So if we go to full screen, it's a now fix in here. But then aside from uh, this one, we still need to fix our model here. So this is the mobile screen view here. So it's uh, looking pretty good at the moment. And if I click this, it's also looking good because we've done some refinements earlier. So let me just refresh the page here. This is our model here. So it also looks nice. We just go back, but then let's go to full screen. If we click that, you can see that it doesn't spread out in our full screen mode. So let's fix that. So I'll just go back here. I'll minimize that. And then you can see that we have that in here. So I'll just set that to full screen here on the responsive design mode so that we can see it as we work on it. So what I'm going to do is... um. I'll just uh, go here, this area here. This is where we have the container that holds our cart here. So I'll set the breakpoint to have a large breakpoint on half of the width. We'll set the mid breakpoint here to a 12 and uh, set the paddings for a large screen sizes here and uh, mid screen sizes here it's so like so and then um, when you work on the responsive design it's actually a trial and an error in here because you won't be able to really get the exact look that you want at first so you have to just keep on doing it anyways it's just easy to undo and redo it then can easily just uh, press on Control S or Command S to easily look what's best for your website here. All right, so I'm just um, going to be adding a flex here of a flex column here. Let's see what that looks like here again. So looks the same and. So let's see what we can do here. Let me just. We're actually just assessing which container needs to have some changing here. So this uh, container holds the actual photo itself. So we need to also change this. So I'm just uh, setting on the paddings. Also setting the breakpoints here so when you're doing responsive design you would mostly be using breakpoints and it's actually equivalent to at media property when you're working with a local css and if you want to see the breakpoints that's available in tailwind css you can go back to or go to the website tailwindcss.com and then just search for the a grid or the breakpoint documentation in there so when you don't know something a documentation is the best go-to so that you can also see some examples and you can also just copy paste them if you want to so this is our model cart here so let's see what we can change here let's change that 
you can see that it's um, now spreading in here. So that's uh, looking good. Let me just press back here. And we've also added the JavaScript already. It's uh, pretty much the same as to the uh, login model here. So you can challenge yourself and uh, do it and add it on your codes. But then if you need to also check that, you can just uh, download uh, the uh, finish or the unfinish assets in our tutorial folder. So we've messed up our mobile view here for our model model card so let's just uh, fix that let me just set that full install auto let me just delete this we have a duplicate in here all right save that all right um, that's fixed now so as you can see we have set our uh, website here to be responsive so it's responsive to full screen it's, it's also responsive to a mobile screen so now we have a fully designed our e-commerce website and only with the use of Tailwind CSS and JavaScript.